Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's really long video, we're going to be talking about um, endgame tanking builds for Star Trek Online. With, um, the, with the tier 6 X, X upgrades that have come recently, we're going to be going ahead and getting right into this. As you can see here by our outline, there is a lot of stuff I'm talking about in this video today. Um, if I was actually someone who was trying to monetize on this channel, this would probably end up being like a redo of the old tanking guide series and it would probably be at least 12 different separate videos like you might see on some other vid uh, youtubers out there but as i like to just have things more condensed nowadays and things being a bit more infrequent i think it's better for everyone if i just have one video and just put pretty much everything in it uh, reminders that things will be in the description there's going to be a lot of stuff in the, the description. Um, when, it, when it comes to tanking, there is a lot of different ways to look at it. I've, I've tried to rank different things, different traits and stuff based upon the entire like the entire range of which different ways to tank. Um, but I'll look into some of the biases in just a moment. Again, time links in the, it will be in the description as well as, 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 the, as the time bar below the video. Keep in mind though, we have over 175 slides that we're going through today. As a result, this is going to be a long video, and it might be hard to navigate that time bar. There's going to be a lot of time links. So pay attention um, to the description. That might be more useful to you. Um, so first off, um, when we're talking about stuff, kind of like as an introduction, I'm kind of hoping that you have all have, have watched the Budget Bills 2020 video. Um, there are a decent amount of sets in that 2020 video that are still viable today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, the brand new science set that, that came out. I won't show stats because, I mean, there's other YouTubers that have already gone into depth on that. But other, other than science, the meta hasn't really changed all that much. Really, just besides a couple of low buy 3 p sets that are that are decent. Um, a lot of stuff hasn't particularly changed outside of the fact that we've got, we have an extra console and we have an extra starship trait and device that we can actually use as tanking. Um, extra devices make more of a deal for us as tanks than actual DPS players, frankly, inside of Star Trek Online, which is going to make it much more useful and easier for us as tanks to be able to use different types of devices going on inside of the game. There will be a couple of slides about devices later on in this video. What it comes down to is basically if, if you use one of my Budget Build 2020 edition videos, um, builds, You'll be able to handle advanced patrols, advanced TFOs, and elite level missions inside of the game. It's only if you're wanting to tackle basically all the elite level TFOs are you really going to be considering the stuff in this video today. If you're only going to do advanced stuff inside the game, you don't really need to spend any money whatsoever on stuff inside of this game. Of course, I mean, there's also space bar being those aspects too, but at least from a, a mechanic standpoint, if all you care about is just getting through the missions on normal and advanced difficulty and like TFOs and stuff, you don't really need to worry about stuff in this video or upgrading stuff to tier 6x, stuff like that. As, as tanks, technically it's not needed to upgrade to tier 6x either for doing tanking and stuff, but I mean, DPS players are doing that and trying to stretch their limits. So for us to have an easier time to hold threat, it's recommended if you're, if you're tanking in the lead to, to also of upgrade to starship the tier 6x as well keep in mind there's going to be a couple of, of items that are a little bit harder to acquire nowadays i really hope that a couple of the items and traits go into mud's market soon for the ones that are harder to acquire and are from previous anniversary events and such we will get to those when we get to them in this video it's gonna be a long video um keep in mind um if you only care about ground stuff i've made two previous videos that have had pretty reasonably extensively covered how how to build for ground both for your away teams to basically have your away teams pretty much carry you in missions or if you really just wanted to do tfos and ground some decent stuff for ground as well to get you through it just fine if you want to refine it further um the dps league for sto did put out a post a couple of weeks ago in terms of what they feel is, is the meta for ground combat that refines things and clarifies things a little bit more than what my rough ideas was on my ground TPS builds video because I mean a lot of my builds even the ones that I'll be showing in this video today in terms of builds and such are based upon feel um, they aren't really based upon like this thing does like 5% more damage than this thing therefore you should choose this 
there are people on the, the on the as SEL builds Reddit and DPS League that basically choose weapons over others because of because of stuff like that. Again, I I choose stuff because I like the feel of certain builds over others, and I will explain those as as we get to them too. Um, and yeah, they've also put stuff on other types of builds as well, and hanger pants as such as well. Really, www.sto-league.com uh, is is a really great resource. Um, again, when it comes to pricing considerations, um, because I'm I'm someone who goes more by feel than by the direct actual numbers. You're going to notice that I value and I will place preference over a lot of stuff that is from the C store or stuff that is already fully earnable inside of the game right now. Um, there are going to be some stuff that I'll be pointing out in this video that are, are from loot boxes that are basically like, like a smidget better than stuff from the C store. But whenever there's things that are almost equally comparable, especially when it comes to tanking, when we don't necessarily need to push the envelope in terms of DPS, like if we're still in the rough ballpark, and we're able to hold threat and survive through it, then we're, then we're doing our job, frankly. So because of that realm, I will veer towards sea store stuff more than maybe some other captains might inside this game. I, I have tons of tank captains um, on, on my account. So being able to have stuff that's account unlock is really, really valuable to me per personally. Now, getting into the actual video itself. Now, um, this is my personal spectrum for how I view tanks. Basically, we have a spectrum from those types of tanks that are pretty much all clicky based versus ones that are very minimalist on their amount of clicky consoles that they're using on their starships. And it's much more, here's some of the better like DPS oriented um, consoles. And then you basically just survive through your raw damage healing you or having lots of, of immunities and things to bring you back. Most tanks, in my opinion, should start kind of like in the middle. Look at some of the decent strong consoles. Look at a couple of the ones that are decent for damage, and then start getting to a feel after after you've done elite TFOs for all as to kind of what route you want to go. Um, a lot of tanks out there kind of like veer towards one end of the spectrum or the other. Um, me personally, well, it'll be your um, personal opinion whenever you watch look at some of the builds as to which route that I personally veer towards. If you want to, if you want to do turtle tanking specifically, in my opinion, you need to choose some of these stronger starships that have exclusive consoles. The, um, the, the tier six flagships have their really strong flagship console set. The 31st century ships like the cruiser, the cruiser and the science vessel both have a really strong taunt console, which is really nice. Monco Battle Cruiser has the strongest console available to it in the game, as well as a not cool um, science vessel, which of course is going to, well, should have been there, but whatever. Uh, and of course, we also have the Voth Rampart, which is, which, is, which is a new addition, and it's a fantastic starship as well. Pretty much, it's, an, it, it, it's very much an alternative to the sticks in many, many ways. Um, you also can get a sort of feel for those types of starships if you use the full Dominion console set. It's really expensive to get that set though, and you don't really get the, as much mileage as you would with something like the flagship set. Um, in my opinion, for tanks overall, um, in my opinion, if, if you want to have a decent feel, like if, if you don't know what you're doing, I recommend at least a hull of, of a 1.25 and at least a shield ratio of, of a 1.1. Um, especially whenever, whenever it comes to shields, if you want to actually be able to rely upon the shields, at least 1.1. If it's less than 1.1, don't bother with your shields for survival at all. Just focus entirely on, on your hull for tanking. 1.1 to 1.3 for shield ratio, you can invest in some extra stuff for passive regeneration and scaling with max shields. It's only when you get, get above a 1.3 shield ratio is whenever it gets to the point that, yeah, my shields can definitely support my, my survival just fine. Um, and of course, for science, we have this as well. Keep in mind as well, um, in this video, I'm not going to be talking about pure torpedo tanks. I know that they exist. I've, I've tried them. They work. I just don't enjoy them. And so the closest that I, that I can get for actual torpedoes is to go the science route. And um, this is still mainly using abilities to get your threat for you. Um, side torp that's actually based on your torpedoes doing lots of your damage, like with like with like a command with concentrated firepower, is kind of difficult for us to do just because just because of the bridge officer ability is required to do it. Um, I, I highly recommend either going the pure um, science clicky route 
or going direction energy weapon based science if you really don't want to rely upon all those a ton um and i'll be showing builds from miracle, the miracle of voyager as well as the 31st century eternal later in the video although both their builds are fairly similar um i know that the dps community loves the Vern and and the colony scout ship and such their stats just aren't good enough in my opinion to be able to handle tanking um in, in a reasonable fashion you can you can you can still pull off with the Vern if you really want to I think the other ones are better because they have a smidget higher um, base hull HP and strong consoles in their own right that allow them to tank a little bit better. Um, when it comes to Psy Energy, um, the Science Redknots are really nice, or you know, Science Destroyers, Science Spearheads. That's how, that that is where it's there. Although I don't like the Paradox as much as like the current of Anorax because I don't own an Anorax, um, and I also like account unlock things. I did um, buy one of the recent time bundle things from mud's market during one of the recent sales um because the paradox was in one of them i will be showing a paradox in there so in case you all want to try to do sign energy that's probably the one that i would recommend personally um you can also do it with well i don't know there's there's not enough engineering abilities available in in the cardassian size drawn to really do it super well you still can though but it's just a little bit harder um when it comes to professions um tldr for this is that i hi highly recommend science i know people aren't really going to tell you that thing is if going for for pure budget science is the best by far um they have a lot of useful abilities in ground and space they're the most straightforward for for the budget end they have gotten a smidget better at the high end thanks to the most recent um science ability that, that was added with the winter um with, with our winter event it's basically a temporary HP um, science ability, and it's a it's a fantastic heal, um, an effective heal anyway. And so, science actually actually has a decent console now, or decent kit module now for Arena of Sonbeck. Really, it was just engineers and tactical that had great stuff before, and now science actually has something unique for them to make them useful in Sonbeck. I'm um, still at the high end. Um, what makes them still useful is subnucleonic beam especially if you're, you're, you're playing H HSC, having at least one science profession captain in, in your group to use sub nuclear beam on the board queen is still really nice to have. Um, I mean, technically overall, if you're, if you're counting in ground and space, they are technically the worst for high-end DPS, just because engineers do edge out against tactical on a couple of specific ground um, maps. But I mean, still, um, science is still fantastic. Tactical, if you really want to go pure DPS, tactical is still the best, though. Um, and engineering, well, it, it has its situational usefulness. Um, if you're going to make a pre-made team of, of five captains, and you're going to just go through every single elite TFO in, in the game, in both ground and space, and you're going to keep the same captain, same builds, and everything for space and ground, I would probably recommend two tactical officers, two engineering officers, and one science officer. Um, the, the engineers are really, really useful for... Um, for for the ground maps like the the Lucari um, ground maps, um, as well as what is it called? It's the one where you where it, it it's the ground map for 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 D Space Nine like like the mirror one I think that you're like or the red one like like you're you're going through you're doing a couple of spots. Um, whenever you're defending like the two two t technicians, um. The, um, the engineer cover shield ability is pretty invaluable for, um, for that particular ground map. Anyway, um, when it comes to space sets in general, um, getting away from, from professions, uh, for, for direction and, and, and energy weapon stuff, I mean, one of the standstill great options is the, the colony deflector, competitive engines, whichever variant is best for your build along with the Discovery Re Re Reputation Shields and Core. Um, technically, if you want to go for a slightly different meta and you want to deal with more with doing slightly more damage over a little bit of extra survival with, with that, that really insane Discovery 2 piece of extra holy generation, you can go with, with the old Fleet Elite Spire War Core. Or if, if you have a Roman ship, the Fleet Thoron Infuse War, War Core is, is great too. Um, because that one has extra... Um, 
stuff on it. That's really nice. I can't remember the mods offhand, but that, one, that, one, that one's really good. Um, the really, really old old meta and Florian's build that I'll, I'll be showing for the build stuff later is basically this. The really old meta prior to the discovery reputation was the Colony Deflector with the competitive three-piece. It's also because of that old meta that you will see some tank builds on the STO builds use the Disco re re Reputation's three-piece. Um, because they because they like to have a, have the feel of a, of a three piece space set, and they see the colony deflector is still a deflector that that they can't do without. A couple of my builds in particular um, would use the Kabali two piece and the Discovery two piece. Um, both those two pieces give you extra full, re full re re regeneration. Um, if if you're a low HP, the Kabali two piece does more like whole regeneration than even the Discovery two piece is giving you. So. They, they, they both give a lot of whole regen, and the Kabali Deflector and Engines actually are pretty good in terms of their actual base stats that they're giving you in terms of survival. But then again, that is a very survival base. And of course, Dark Blade, as you all know, I've talked about a lot that he uses the Kabali 4 piece because that, that, that gives him a, a clicky that, combined with the Kabali console, effectively gives you the um, Engineer's uh, survival clicky ability that, that's innate with the engineering profession for space. He's able to effectively get that and basically pretend that he's an engineer while, while, while having all the offensive capabilities of a tactical captain. Um, for exotic stuff, um, in the olden days before the Imperial Rift 4 piece was added to the game, the way that, that we were kind of going with exotics was Temple Rep Deflector and Engines and Discovery Rep Chasing Corn Shields, or you could do stuff like Colony Deflector, Competitive Engines, and Temple Rep Corn Shields. Um, Either of those ways were fine. If you want to go with complete survival, the Temple Rep 4 piece is actually pretty nice. Um, the 4 piece gives a pretty good scaling um, EPG um, hold on, on enemies. Um, um, the the Card Rep and Dice Rep are also pretty fantastic as, as, a, as a 4 piece great option. A Dice is much more defensive than the Lucari one is. Um, Lucari one is like an AoE protection survival option while well, dyson is like completely everything is going into your shields when it comes to survival um for exotic stuff um the meta right now for exotics is to use the imperial imperial rift four piece that that clicky is just ridiculously insanely good for dps right now it does require positioning and setup and i'm, I'm just gonna be realistic with you all um yes if in the, in the theoretical world, the four piece would be the way to go for science de science tanking right now. The problem is we're dealing with the real world, and in the real world, you have other things to worry about besides just DPS. You're worrying about you know making sure that you're near enemies, making sure that you're keeping up your threat, make sure you're dealing timing your heals correctly and stuff so you can stay alive. There is a lot of stuff going on for you as a tank alongside just trying to make sure that you stay within your certain things because this because it is an ability that can miss and so because there's a lot of extra skill involved in making sure that that clicky works because otherwise if you're not doing that clicky properly you might as well drop to the two piece yes i i'm, I'm going to see that here the four pieces like extra passive basically gives you an extra four percent crit chance whenever you do the math on it so yes there is those benefits in my opinion the major reason for the four piece over the two piece is just the clicky but again for me personally because of that skill expression because it can miss and you can mess it up really easily as a tank it's easier just to not have that that complication in my opinion the imperial rift two piece is the way to go whenever you're picking the two piece in my from my personal testing and stuff the imperial rift core is the essential thing to have in your build if, if you want whatever other, other piece you decide to choose is up to you. In my opinion, the core is the most important piece to keep in there. Um, my, my, two, my, my two ones that I like is Imperial Rift Deflection, Deflector and Core with Competitive Engines and Temporal Rep Shields or temp, Temporal Rep 2 piece. It, it's what I personally like to use for my exotic builds. But um, anyway, um, there is that. Um, now we'll talk about the Endeavor system for just a moment. Um, I know that some of you are. Uh, a little bit newer to the game and you might not understand like why leveling the endeavor system is important here's a bunch of stats i probably wrote a couple of these wrong and people will correct me in the comments just fine that's that, that, that that's not a big deal i have over 175 slides there's probably going to be some typing errors um, throughout this video 
what it comes down to basically is we have some damage stats and we have a lot, a lot of survival stats. We have some damage stats and basically all the damage stats is good. We have some survival stuff that's decent for us as tanks. Then there's some survival stuff that's like, eh, I wish we had something else besides this that that cryptic added to the game. Sure, control and drain resist in particular. It is an old type of stat that doesn't really exist anymore in the game. Like back in the day before science was, was revamped, because like before the revamp, I didn't even bother trying with science. Back in the day, we you used to choose, you had to choose between like stacking drain and stacking drain resist and stuff like that. Control, control resist. And now it's just outside of the endeavor system, like if, if you're stacking drain, you're also stacking drain resist on top of being able to do drains better and stuff. So um, the endeavor system is kind of pulling a little bit of a like throwback to the olden days of Stowe giving specifically the resistance part of drain and, and control inside of the skill tree. The big things I've noticed well in terms of stats, this does not have passive shield regeneration and it does not have exotic particle generator added to the base stats here. In my opinion, that's, that, that, that's pretty important and that's overall a decent slight against exotic base builds in this game, especially for exotic tanking. Now, that being said, um, when it comes to the survival stats here, 60% whole regen is very respectable. 15% max HP is, is nice. And we have 15% shield hardness. Those of you all that don't remember from my exceeding 75% resistance video, it is an old video that doesn't get a ton of views, so probably a lot of you have, haven't seen that video. Shield hardness is a special type of shield resistance that scales linearly. So if you have 15% shield hardness, that actually is 15% resistance at your starship. 20% shield hardness is 20% shield resistance on, on, on your starship. It's really, really nice. Um, it, it, it was really added to the game just so that shield power felt nice and made sense. Basically, more points of shield power gave you more shield hardness and shield regeneration. Assuming that you got about 50 um, shield power because otherwise you wouldn't have the shield resistance. So um, what it comes down to as well, terrain impulse is also nice. Because of that... The way that I see the Endeavor system is DPS builds should probably view it as a, as the Endeavor system, at least for the terms of the more worthwhile stats, gives them about two consoles worth of effective stats. And for tank builds, because we like the survival stuff as well, it gives us about three consoles worth of, of effective stats. So if you're low on the Endeavor system trying to compete in elite content, keep in mind from, from effective stats, you're going to be about, about three consoles worth of base stats down from other captains in in the queue so just keep that in mind like your builds are probably not gonna be as effective as some of the other players you know who are showing off builds on on youtube and twitch and and sdl builds and such i kind of wish there was there was a way that um we could basically like just like do a check to like turn off the endeavor system like the, the endeavor system stats so that you know that that like our are people that are trying to push the limits in, in the game can basically be like, hey, here's a build that I've tested that I've, I've turned off the Endeavor system and this build still works. I keep my most builds still going to be the same, but at least they can, they can help show some more realistic numbers for players who are super new to the game that they can see exactly what, what type of effectiveness they should be expecting from certain builds over others. Um, so yeah, so with that, I'm going to show three different skill trees, two that are mine for exotic and two for Energy weapon base. I also have Florian's build as well as Augmented Dictator Gaming's um, build for skill tree as well. Uh, keep in mind, Augie's is the one he uses for basically all types of damage. Florian's is for his own specific build. Um, there are other skill trees available in, in the, the description through other builds that I will have a have link there. So that's that's up to you. This is how I basically value the skill tree. Um, I know some of you are a little bit color deficient, so. Um, I'm a little bit color official, but at least I'm not fully color blind. Basically, if, if there's red stuff here, basically it's stuff to basically avoid at all costs. Um, and then those things at all costs are also like basically like marked out over, over, over here. The, the stuff in yellow is stuff that's actually pretty good for us as, as, as tanks overall. Uh, the blue stuff is really, really great for science. White is very situational. You basically slot it only if you're, only if you have a really if you have a big ulterior motive to slot it, or or you in a very specific situation where where that would be useful. 
and so on and so forth. And green is specifically for direct, direct energy weapon based builds. Um, of course, impulse is still useful to everyone. So going into the different ranks, um, when it comes to us for tanking, like this first rank is actually pretty powerful. Energy and weapon training, um, 25 to 50% of cat one damage is actually pretty valuable for us. Additionally, 25 to 50% whole healing and 15 to 30% max HP from, from the skill tree is, is pretty nice. I'm not going to deny it. That is really nice to have. Um, shield restoration is kind of situational. Shield capacity kind of sucks, which on surface would not seem that way. But what it comes down to, and I mean, Dark Blaze talked about this a little bit in his video, The Tanking Spectrum. Basically, here is our perspective on, on how tanking works. You have threat generation, damage mitigation, and damage recovery. You have threat generation, which, which includes damage. There are doing to enemies, disables, and controls. They're making it harder for their enemies to, to like do stuff, as well as some basic consoles that that will inherently um, increase your threat or you know quick threat and stance stuff like that damage negation is the way that you survive really high spike damage or damage that that comes against you in a very short amount of time but that's very high amounts of damage but very low frequency then um, a lot of our hole and shield resistances increasing our max hp and max shields increasing temporary hp and temporary shields is how it's how we survive through that so of course we have we have damage recovery um which is the way that we you know, continue to survive in TFOs after we've taken damage, where that's lots of spike damage or a lot of, you know, sustained, but still moderate to moderate high damage. This includes a lot of passive hole regeneration and shield regeneration, our active hole and shield healing, as well as, for lack of a better term, basically lifesteal. That basically, like, that part of our outgoing damage can help to heal our hole and shields a little bit more as well. Now, um, a a long time ago, um, Crypt Studios went away from its old way of doing doing um, hole and shield maximums as well as hole and shield regeneration. There used to be a different method. I'm not really going to go into this video because there's really no point to talk about it. The way it works now is starters just have, have a base hole ratio and a base shield ratio. And that base hole and shield ratio is used for both the base hole HP and base shield HP that the starship uses. So whenever a starship you know, increases its HP by a certain percentage, it's it's referring to the whole ratio as to how much HP and how much shield is going to be increasing for whatever that, that actually is. The base hole and shield region is also tied to this ratio as well. So if you want a really high re, um, base regeneration for hole or shields, we'll look, look at your starship, see how high it is. And if it's what you want, then you, you can select that starship. Now, normally it shouldn't be that outside of this ratio that, you know, max shield to max hole shouldn't increase this regeneration. But the thing is, over time, Cryptic has added a lot of stuff specifically for hull that makes it really enticing to hull tank and basically ignore shields altogether, which is kind of sad. Um, it'd be kind of nice if Cryptic added more things that would, in, that would entice us to actually add uh, maximum shields. But at the current time, that's not actually how it works. Um, going up to once, once you get past 200k uh, max HP, then max HP doesn't help with threat generation. But until that point, max HP increases your crit chance, so it helps with threat. And max HP, in, with many different procs in, in the game, also um, increases your whole regeneration. Because there's a lot of whole regeneration that, um, that the procs are based upon a percentage of your maximum HP. So there is a lot of stuff there, and so max HP is one of the best stats to actually stack. Well, besides raw damage stuff, it's one of the best non-damage things technically to stack as as a tank, and so that 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 is pretty valuable. Of course, we have stuff like energy refuser that the more hull restoration that you have, the more effective that is going to be. So restoration is really effective for stuff like shield refuser generator and things like that. That you know, it actually scales a little bit with shield restoration, not much, but it's still something. Um, at, at, at Lieutenant Commander rank, um, e EPS flow over on, on the left-hand side for engineering is extremely valuable. Um, basically, if you're doing a direct range weapon build, you need those two points there, but completely ignore full impulse energy shunt. That is like the worst in the game by far. There is a um, ability right here in the Merc worker, worker spec that because many of you are probably going to pick Merc Worker as your primary, you're already going to be getting something that effectively is much better than that because it 
basically um, this 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 thing here. I can't I can't remember the name. I forgot to clip the actual actual image, but what this basically does is right after you exit full impulse because you're because you're going into combat, your power levels power levels immediately return to the way that they were before. This one just is it like sets your um, power levels to not at like super minimum whenever you're going at, at full impulse. So not quite as good. For the science skill tree, all the stuff here is actually pretty good. Extra control and drain is, is nice. Control amplification for more damage resistance debuffs for exotic stuff is nice. Drain affection is also decent if you have drain effects going on in, in your build. Not all science builds use drain. Um, so it depends upon your build as to whether that's going to be super, value, super valuable for you or if it's something that you can't ignore. All science stuff uses control and stuff fashion, so control and control and amplification is going to be pretty nice. In terms of the tactical skill tree itself for points, um, the targeting aspects and defensive maneuvering is some of the least valuable stuff when it comes to PVE for for tanking in particular. If you want to go to PVP, this becomes the most some of the most valuable stuff, but we're not doing PVP in this video. So, and, and a lot of times, if, if all you care about is offense, a lot of times um, DPS captains will just ignore the three points of defensive maneuvering in, in, in the tactical skill tree. And then they just invest in everything else for maximum DPS and to get that tactical ultimate. So yeah, um, in terms of the commander rank, the engineering stuff here is complete garbage. This is stuff to really avoid entirely. Only if you have like very little points in the Endeavor system would you even consider putting stuff in points here over for engineering. Maybe one point here if you don't have the DPRM and you don't have Honored Dead and you just need a little bit of hold of, of damage resistance on your starship, one point here is fine. Ignore the two subtypes under hull plating. Um, for damage control, the problem with damage control is like if it was actually 50 to 100% hull regeneration, it actually wouldn't be that bad. The problem is, is that it's cut to, to 10 to 20% hull regen whenever you're inside of combat. And as a tank, we really just care about the hull regen whenever we're inside of combat. So this is not really good. It's not like shield regen that actually is like 50 to like 100%. Um, max shields re regeneration. This shield regen is really, really nice. This is really, 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 really nice. Please don't un underestimate this. And again, for science, instead of like instead of like raw resistance, it's we're getting shield hardness here in the science skill tree. And again, as I mentioned before, it's a special shield resistance that scales linearly. So that this is this is insanely valuable to invest in. If you're doing science tanking with a low hull, high shields, investing three points in here is not going to be bad for you. And of course, for, for weapons, getting extra, extra crit chance and crit severity here is nice. If you're doing a pure science only build and don't really care about your weapons, you don't really need to invest in this. But otherwise, if for all other builds, you're probably going to want to invest highly in, in weapon amplification and specialization. Um, now, now that we're getting to captain, the engineering stuff all becomes very situational. Um, typically, in my builds, when I put stuff in these power levels here, it was pretty much the last points in that skill tree that I put into the power levels here. Because here, as well as in Admiral, it's basically just power levels from here, and then a little bit, a little bit of cooldowns in, in, in the Admiral. It's honestly super boring. I really hope that Cryptic really looks at engineering and really redoes a lot of stuff in the skill tree, because a lot of this isn't quite that worthwhile, frankly. Now, long range targeting sensors is extremely valuable for all direct your engine weapon based builds. It lowers the, the penalty from being far away from a target from 50% down to 20% if, if you max this out. And so, yes, you should max out long range targeting sensors if you're using directed engine weapon based builds. If you're doing a pure torque build, you don't need this. If you're just, if you're just doing pure exotics, you don't need this. If you're doing any weapon based stuff in your, in your build that actually uses your weapon power, then yeah, you're going to want this thing. And of course, if you're doing a science build, then you want exotic power generator. Um, in some of my builds, I do have one point in this, even without science abilities, just because a couple of the tier five and tier six acti um, active abilities um, do scale a little bit off of EPG. So it's having a little bit is nice to make those do a little bit of an extra punch. Of course, we have extra hole and shield pen, which is nice too. 
Um, when it comes to us for tanking, the Admiralty row of stuff is actually some of the weakest stuff here in the, the skill tree. Um, if you have a good build with Ox to Bat and things, you can often get away with not necessarily needing to invest in readiness in, in the skill tree here. The Shield Mastery thing, as I've been shown in math, is not that great. I, I was overhyping Shield Mastery. Because a lot, a lot of the crits that, that come in in Star Trek Online aren't super damaging crits. I was just getting lucky, apparently, when I was initially liking Shield Mastery a whole bunch because I was negating really high damage crits. Um, if you're able to get the RNG just right for the crits to always be really high crits that you're negating whenever you have Shield Mastery, then it's great. Otherwise, you probably it's probably something that you can avoid as well. Um, in the, in the tactical side of things. Um, I highly recommend just investing in, in all three points of coordination protocols, coordination protocols as well as the defense and offensive one, just because this scales, um, this gives a little bit of stuff to your allies as well as to yourself, and your allies are going to be complaining, as I found out the hard way, if you don't have all three points in coordination protocols, because then all of them realize, hey, I'm down in damage, why is someone not having coordination protocols on my team? So yeah, it. I've had some heated conversations about this, and I've just in my skill trees, I, I just invested in three points here, so we, I don't have those those angry conversations with with people in the future. Um, in terms of engineering, the actual most important thing over here actually is warp core efficiency. If you're going to use a warbird, um, having warp core efficiency is actually pretty nice because warbirds have a lot less power than other starships in the game, and this can help counter it. I don't really feel that, that penalty really needs to be there on warbirds anymore. I think they should just be like like, like, like a regular starship. Right? It's just that they have a singularity core that gives them an activatable ability. But that's just me personally. So yeah, um, if you're really early in the Endeavor system, a point hold play and a point damage control is fine. Otherwise, don't worry about that part of the skill tree at all. So yeah, that that is me. Um, as, for, as for skill tree stuff, um, this is Florian's skill tree. Um, I'll, I'll show a tier 6x adapted version. Like my personal, like if I wasn't just, if I was just adding a tier 6x starship tree and console and device, that's that's what the build would be. And I'll, and I'll be showing that later on in, in, the, in the video. This is the skill tree that he uses. Um, in my opinion, especially with the Endeavor system, the way it is now, there are certain things that could be reallocated elsewhere, like up the point in damage resistance here isn't really needed, and it could go elsewhere. I don't fully agree with the max shields here, but he has, he does have points in in passive shield region, so this does have a little bit of value. Um, so yeah, there, there there's a lot of decent stuff going on here for, for his particular build itself. Um, this right here is the build that I typically use for most most of my direct energy weapon based tanks. Um, and the big important points in here is is to choose threat control, so you get additional threat during the stance, which is really nice. And the other thing is to choose subsystem repair whenever you get to that point in the engineering tree, oh, over here in the and not like that bottom part whenever you're choosing the different points for having a lot of points in, in the engineering skill tree. Technically, from a DPS standpoint, you should be picking whole capacity, but this is so minor of additional crit that you can get from the whole capacity that substance repair is just much more valuable to you especially if you're going to be on, on a build without human bridge officers without without without, that, without a lot of that that leadership trait on your starship having that extra resistance to off, off, offline effects from this is is pretty nice to have and this is my off tank option if you're going to go for the tactical ultimate this is my recommendation to use I should just put three points in science for the long retarding sensors, then everything else in the tactical ultimate, and then a bunch of just engineering abilities from there. Um, now, this, there is a, the slight variation of my off tank that's using the wrong on scimitar will actually have a point here instead of here, but otherwise it's basically the exact same between all my different off tanks. And yes, yeah, so there's the skill trees for that. In terms of science, um, this is my side torp that I'm using, um, which has a lot of points in shields. I, I I didn't go full for the science ultimate because I found out because of how much crit I have in my science build that um, using the science ultimate was actually a DPS decrease 
for my builds, which was kind of sad because it sets your crit to 50%. Um, it did help with survival though, but I've already got an, I've already got, there's not enough consoles to spare for survival stuff if needed for, for, for science builds. So, and science builds is just like all clickies anyway. So, um, this is the skill tree that I like to use for site torp. Um, now for my site energy build, it is quite a bit different. Um, my site energy that I do, um, is cannon scatter volley tanking, um, for science. Um, just because, I mean, Science builds are already built around forward firing and stuff anyway, and that, that forward 135 degree arc or so. And so for me, the way that I saw was like, there was really going to be no point to really fully broadside. So unless Cryptic releases like, like, like a five weapon in, in the front, two in the rear, like Science Destroyer, Science, uh, Science Spearhead, or like Science Dreadnought, unless Cryptic does something like that, so I can just have two beam omnis in the, in the back i don't really see the value of doing beams over over, over cannons for 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 a science energy based build frankly just just the way that i see it and also because of the abilities to extend um fire will versus you know like can scatter volley there there's there's a lot of cons there with so few abilities to spare in terms of bridge officer abilities that I, I just feel can scare volley is just about the best way to go in my opinion for psi energy and of course this is augmented dictator gaming's um version for um yeah for 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 his, for his skill tree um he posted this just just a few weeks ago as well um so you can go ahead and go on twitter and thank him for making that skill tree for you basically this is the skill tree that he uses for basically all of his builds Keep in mind, he is very much a on on the DPS side of everything that he does. Whenever he tanks, he's definitely on the off tanking side of things. Um, in my personal viewpoint of how of, of, of the spectrum for tanking, he's definitely on on the DPS side of things. So, if you like something like that, this is a decent skill tree for all those types of builds. Now, when it comes to specializations, um, Timberwolf did do a like hour long video talking about specializations. So. I don't really feel that it's needed for me to go super in depth into all the different specializations. So I'm basically just going to save you some time and basically tell you what I think are the best. And basically when it comes to, when it comes to specializations, commando is the best specialization for ground and strategies is pretty much the best specialization for space. The problem with both the specializations is that both the specializations are stuck in the secondary on special on specialization slot because they because they, they can't be primary specializations that does hurt us when it comes to science tanking and I'll, and I'll get that in just to that in just a moment but when it comes to energy energy based tanking your two great options is miracle worker and intelligence miracle worker is your best well-rounded one for tanking you've got a decent survival clicky um at the tier four rank you've, you've got some extra crit chance and stuff already built into the skill tree as well um, but if you really are going for pure DPS orientation for your um, energy-based tanking, um, it is really the best one to use um, instead of Miracle Worker. So anyway, um, moving on. Sorry, I skipped that for a moment. Um, for exotic tanking, my personal preference is actually Miracle Worker Primary, Temper Operative, Secondary. The problem with Temper Operative frankly is the third and fourth tier stuff as a tank means absolutely nothing for us in space um the fourth tier stuff doesn't give you anything if you have threatening stance on which sucks and the third tier stuff only matters at all if you're doing energy-based science tanking and being realistic here that's not a very common thing to use so you can go temper operative primary strategy secondary and that, that's what a lot of captains will use for exotic dps and exotic tanking because temper operative's third and fourth tier stuff doesn't really do much for us in my opinion just sliding temper operative as as a secondary to get the best stuff from the first and second tier and that epg and just sliding miracle worker primary in from my personal feel of how things are in the game, that just it just feels better than temper operative strategies. Both of them work just fine. So 
you can definitely go with either and and you'll be able to tank just fine um for cooldown management we of course have two we have the two standard options one uses ox to bat and one doesn't if you want to do exotic builds you really need to go with a with, with, with the non ox bat, bat option with either photonic officer 2 or photonic officer, officer 1 plus a good starship trait that helps out with that either either the improved photonic officer trait which is super strong especially for tanking or you can, you can go with the arrest trait which is the cheaper option and it's free from the constable specialization so either way those works just fine if you're an ox to bat i mean you can you can do a half bat build with stock option one plus one ox bat one um ability keep in mind if you're doing ox to bat for your cooldowns you need three um duty officers that are technicians with with the recharge variant that says bridge out powers um are, are, are reduced by some percentage after after using the auxiliary power to emergency battery ability that that is what we're meaning by by an ox bat build it, it uses two of these ox bat officers so that we can basically not have to not have to double up on abilities um, throughout our build keep in mind photonic officer because of its buffs does basically the same thing but without needing bridge officers although you need a starship trait to, to handle it super effectively if you don't you, you, you could do the math, especially if you're using Borg officers to not have to worry about that or invest heavily in the skill tree to make sure you don't have to worry about that. Other options, of course, is two Oxbat officers, either Oxbat 1s or one Oxbat 1, Oxbat 2. Um, as a tank, you do not want to do Oxbat 1 and Oxbat 3 because you want Reverse Shield Polarity 3, if possible, in your build. And so don't, don't, don't do that. The other options are perfectly fine, though. When it comes to bridge officer abilities, reverse shield polarity is the most important ability to slot inside your build. Um, it gives you practical immunity to energy damage. It starts at a base 75% resistance, like at reverse shield polarity 3, but of course with other healing enhancing stuff on, on your build, this can go up to ridiculous numbers. Basically what it comes down to is it's functionally, whenever it's active, you're functionally immune to energy damage while it's up. You, you're still vulnerable to non-energy-based damage sources, kinetic, physical, radiation, all that type of stuff. You're still you're still vulnerable to all those types of things too. Um, and when you factor in that there is a duty officer that increases the duration of a virtual player by another eight seconds, what this means is that the base duration of virtual player, virtual player, which is normally twelve to twenty seconds based upon rank, twelve seconds at rank one, which is lieutenant. Uh, at rank two, lieutenant commander, it's 16 seconds, and at rank three, at commander rank is 20 seconds. So this officer is effectively giving you two ranks worth of of duration. So this is so if you have a versus priority three with this officer, it's like as if you had a versus priority five on your starship, which is pretty powerful. There are a few other strong duty officers available to you, um, and and you'll and you'll see those in a couple of builds. Um, They'll be coming later on in this video. Um, th this is one of the, of the other fun slides. Um, there's three different, in my opinion, viable attack patterns. Most of the time, the focus is on attack pattern beta and attack pattern delta, because those, those, those are the popular ones. There is also attack pattern lambda and attack pattern omega. Omega is not viable at all, frankly. Just don't use it. Lambda is still has has the niche option if you happen to have not enough tactical abilities frankly available to slot the attack pattern alongside the other tactical abilities that you need and it's nice options so that you can use cold harder without using any um ox to bat abilities and it also allows you to use rhythm rumble easily which you know rhythm make rumble is basically the slightly more budget option for um for for honored dead a really strong damage resistance rating starship trait that is really expensive for kdf captains of course you have to have a pilot seat so that's really the hardest part about type power and lambda type power and delta and type power and beta are our are better dps options type power and beta is very much the more account friendly option frankly um it's it's decent filler starship trait is from a sea store temper optic warship it doesn't matter what variant that you get 
it depends upon, it depends upon your faction as as to which starships what you're going to be using for your starship if you're a federation captain you'll you'll get the version that get that gives you bonus on phaser damage klingons get bonus disruptor romulans get bonus plasma dominion captains get bonus polaron but otherwise it's just a 10 percent firing cycle haste for using attack pattern beta and attack pattern beta is basically up 100 percent of the time so it's basically just a free 10 percent haste attack pattern delta on the other hand as, as as a tank it gives you a free 15% crit chance and like things like 37.5% crit severity while type pattern delta is up keep in mind it, it is the best tps for tanking but if you don't have like a like a board duty officer to keep it up 100% of, of the time it's not gonna be up 100% of the time so there, there's, there's gonna be moments where you don't have the crit chance crit severity from this ability it's still really potent whenever it's up so and if you have access to this trait and you can fit it in your bullet, it is a really, really strong attack pattern nonetheless. Um, just as some reminders here, you know, I, I believe I touched on, on this earlier in, in the video. Um, when, it, when it comes to scalings, damage resistance only scales so far when it comes to surviving spike damage. Um, stacking stuff like max HP and temporary HP is, is pretty nice. Keep in mind the difference really between these is um, stuff that increases your max HP um, basically gets the damage distance rating values of your starship. So, so keep that in mind. Temporary HP does not, and temporary HP also expires after a while. Max HP typically doesn't, where if, if, if it does, at least gives you a reasonable amount of time to get the value out of max HP. Temporary HP has a, oftentimes a very, very low um, duration from it. And um, However, when it comes to max shields and temp shields, max shields doesn't really get as much value as temp shields, in my opinion. However, keep in mind, max shield stats can be deceiving because whenever it says you gained a certain amount of temporary max shields or a certain amount of max shields, you have four shield facings in Star Trek Online, which means if you're only getting hit on one, one, one or two sides, that, that value for extra shields or extra temporary shields can be doubled or quadrupled in terms of that overall effectiveness for you to help to survive um my opinion stacking temp shields is a bit more valuable on starships that you know have lower base values if you have really high base values i mean you're gonna have you have a lot more base shield regen anyway and so it's not gonna be quite as valuable to stack max shields frankly and also there's not a lot of time stats that really stack well for as extra travel beyond just stacking max shields all right so getting beyond that let's get over to starship traits Here's a list of them. There are a couple of extra ones beyond this list that I'll be going through throughout this little section here. I separate these between ones that basically, if you have them, you probably will slot to ones that in a certain circumstance or in a certain situation in your build, you might still slot. So starting off, we'll go with the strong ones. This to remember is like the A++ Starship trait. Honestly, when it comes down to it, it's like, Everything here is fantastic. It's what it just comes down to. And even off tanks that don't really care about the extra damage stuff here because there's other traits that just do more damage, the 30% max HP is really hard to ignore. And that plus the 300% threat generation basically makes it so that even off tanks are going to choose this trait inside of their starship traits. It's just the way that it is. It's really, really strong. If you aren't a tank, this doesn't really do much for you frankly you get 30 percent all damage and you increase max max hp by 30 percent if you're taking damage so if you're in the elite content and aren't taking damage this is a completely worthless trait and you aren't going to slot it i think the thing that's totally fine if you can use a trait it's fantastic if you can't use the trait it sucks um but yeah um another one is mercy weapon cycle um keep in mind um this is a star this is a starship trait that is from three different starships right now in the game but also keep in mind, um, later on next year, there's going to be a new start. There, there, there's going to be then that, that new mechanic that comes out with KDF captains being able to access Federation starships and Federation starships being able to access Federation captains being able to access KDF starships. I don't know how that's going to fully work. If it's just going to be unlocks, just like how Romulans got access to to other Allied Tier Six starships, or if there's going to be a process to do so. But in either case. Um, if you just have one of the options for emergency weapon cycle and don't have 
the other factions variant, it's totally fine. Just wait a few months and your other faction captains will be able to access this trait later. It is a best in slide direction and drop weapon base trait. It is really nice to have. Now, when it comes to our extenders, um, keep in mind for directed and drop weapon base builds, all these specialist abilities are single target, which means our only two good our only two options really for for direct energy weapon builds is cannon scatter volley and beams fire well that's it that's all we, we can really use with within barrage for cannon scatter volley is totally fine it increases the duration by four seconds so for its 15 second cool um for, for because you can use the ability every, every 15 seconds it's up for 14 seconds and down for just one and then it's up again for for that i am totally fine with and there's no real issues with this trait whatsoever there's a smidge of downtime, but that's not really that big of a deal. Beamfire Will has a different problem, though, because its base duration is 10 seconds, like most of the other firing cycle things. But its normal minimum cooldown is 20 seconds instead of 15. Almost every other firing enhancement is 15 seconds for its minimum cooldown. Fire Will is 20. Which means even with redirection arrays being able to potentially go up to 15 seconds for its maximum with redirection arrays you're still at maximum only having a 75 percent uptime on your actual ability instead of um you know like other abilities where it's like 100 percent or close to 100 percent uptime which is a problem because now what we have to do is if we act if, if we're gonna do fire will and we actually want 100 percent uptime we either have to use entwine tabs or matrices and slot a torpedo ability. And then we have like 50% uptime on fire will our higher rank one, and then 50% uptime on that on, on fire will one. And what we're getting with, with the trait is effectively just two free torpedo spreads. Effectively two for torpedo spreads, other than just you know sliding two and being fire will in our build. And so if that's what you're doing, you basically have to ask yourself. Is the two free torpedo spreads worth not just slotting, you know, just two firewall inside your build? I've been trying to do some tests to see if it's actually better to just slot two firewall and just get another starship trait instead of worrying about 20 taps from matrices or redirection arrays. I know that those traits are better than just having just one firewall and nothing else, but whether that's better than just sliding to fire will. I, I still need to do some more testing. I, I, I could be wrong in my gut feeling, but my gut, gut feeling is that there, there, there's enough good damage traits out there that this might actually be the better option, which is really sad for me, for me to say. I'm sure some of you are going to have some opinions on that in the comments, and maybe you'll show me some stats and show me why I'm way off, why I'm way off base and wrong about that. So... I'm really excited to hear some of some of the discussions about this particular issue with fire will in the comments this would be this would be entirely removed by the way if being fire will just had a base minimum cooldown of 15 seconds instead of 20. because if that was the case then we, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now <laughs> all right with that rant out of the way um spore infuse anomalies is is a really nice um, um science exotic ability Keep in mind, you do need to build around the trait for the trait to be strong. But if you build around it, then it is very, very strong. If you don't build around it, just use like Fire Will and one other AoE ability. No, it's it, it's it's not good if you just do that. So, yeah. Um, if if, if you're curious about that discussions, there there have been a lot of posts on Exotics lately by some a couple of people that I really really like and trust on. On, on Reddit, on, on, on the builds Reddit anyway, talk about exotics overall inside the game. Feel free to see their posts on that and, and the math behind it all. Uh, but of course, there is Improved Atomic Officer, which gives you 25% bonus exotic damage, which that by itself would be able to put it here because our next closest bonus exotic damage ability is just 20%, and that's all that, that trait gives us. This is 25% exotic damage plus bonus healing and it makes the officer just better so this is a really 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 strong ability um, if i can only choose one starship to account unlock 
um, from, from, from low buy lockbox promo packs, this would be the starship that I would want to unlock. And I would use a proof tank officer on basically all, all my builds inside the game. Well, most. There's, 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 there's like one star, starship that I'll show later that I basically can't justify it. But we'll, but we'll get to that whenever we get to that particular ship. As, as for, for, for the good traits, we have, we have exotic modulation, which is what I just talked about. It's 20% bonus exotic damage, and that's all that, that it gives you. And you have to basically use temporal abilities for this to proc. It's, it's also for this reason why a lot of people say that, that, you, that you should have, have a temporal science vessel so that you can use exotic modulation. Um, when it comes to tanking, the, the Sea Story e Eternal is pretty much the best science tank in the game right now. Um, because there is a specific console from the 31st century set that is ridiculously good. Um, if you want to use Psy Energy, there are, there are other starships that are smidgen better just because they have seven weapons instead of six. But it is ridiculously good nonetheless. Of course, there's the arrest rate. It's basically just if you want to, if, if, if you want the cooldown stuff from Proof Talk Officer, this is a great option. Just like if you want the damage stuff from, from a Proof Talk Officer, this is a great trade too. Except DPS Cavs will just stack both. So there is that stuff there for you. Of course, we have the Caesar Temper of Worship trait. It has four different names. I'm not going to just put all four of them here. Most people get it from either the Edison or the Sea Store Temper Operative Worship. The um the Gemini version, just just because it has the Gemini weapon mechanics, so you so you have the theoretical higher DPS option there. Basically, if you use temper abilities, or more commonly, if you just use attack pattern beta, you basically get ten percent haste for twenty seconds, and beta has that cooldown. So you're you're going to have that haste up the whole time, plus an extra five percent bonus damage for your faction specific type of damage. The bonus damage isn't really the, the emphasis. The emphasis is the firing cycle haste. It's also the promise of ferocity, which has the potential for an extra twenty percent bonus weapon damage. Um, it only stacks once per four seconds, and you really need need a combat that's 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 a few minutes long, and it's like constant battle, not like a little bit of battle then breaks. Um, you want constant battle for this trait to be really good. So IC and HC are perfectly fine for this. Um, outside of those maps, a lot of other ones aren't going to be quite as useful for this. We also have Combo for the Storm, which is a totally fine trait. The problem with this trait is that, I mean, it's dead for 20 seconds, and then you have 20 seconds of uptime, then another 20 seconds down, 20% up, or, yeah, 20 seconds up, 20 seconds down, 20 seconds up, 20 seconds down. So what it basically comes down to is you're averaging between 33% and 53% of the time, of this of, of the good stuff of this trait effectively being down and being for, uh, for the good stuff being down and up so uh, um like your best case scenario you're looking at like 16 17 percent haste with, with, with some good bridge option re recharge stuff from this trait too if you feel that that's fine then you by all means can slot this trait um, it's, I think it mainly be because of the cooldown stuff is why you want to slot this, frankly. It's going cool with some situational haste. Um, if you don't care about that, there are other traits to use instead. And you can use the haste at your control. Supercharged weapons is a pretty nice starship trait. 4.5% crit with like 19% crit severity plus a little bit of extra category 1 damage alongside it. If you're doing an, an energy, if you're doing a broadside beam build with one torpedo, this is this is a great trait to um, as a basically filler trait basically to put in. It is C store, so it is nice. Um, it is available from the legendary Odyssey as well if you have the legendary bundle. So it's relatively easy to acquire or just get it from the appropriate like Odyssey or or, or, or Centaur that has the, tra the, the trait. Assembly pop power conduits is in the same realm as this one. It's just you use an, a bridge officer building instead of just having a torpedo and firing. Because it's it's five percent crit chance, twenty five percent crit severity versus four and a half percent crit chance and nineteen percent crit severity. So it is in the same rough realm of power, but it's for exotic builds. So exotic builds versus energy or versus energy. So there is that for you in terms of the differences in that. This is low buy, and the other thing is C store. Attack burn delta prime, of course, is going to be here too. 
its only downside is that it's it can't be up 100 percent of the time unless you use like a borg officer to have the small chance for attack brand delta one to, to proc and and to go off on you if you have the if you have that duty officer then for direct engine weapon builds this goes into to the strong category without that, that, that duty officer it is just in my opinion just a good trait but it, but it is a powerful trait nonetheless um honored dead is a great trait too um if you're wanting a trait just to have lots of damage resistance on your build this is the trait to use um it's problem its true problem is um i mean it's, it the problem isn't that it loses stacks of your outside of combat or not cloaked its real problem is that you need this cumulative damage that uh, of post resistance cumulative damage which is a slight problem because nowadays it's a lot easier than than before to stack a lot of temporary hp and temporary shields um and for the damage calculation stuff for some reason with this trait it doesn't count damage against temporary hp and temporary shields as part of this post resistance damage you have to burn through all the temporary hp and temporary shields first before um or at least the part on that shield facing for the specifically for the shields in order for this to actually start stacking so if you have a certain console that i'll show later in the video this trait becomes a little bit less valuable for you is 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 what i'll say and, and, and emphasize it is still a definitely a, a good trait it's still a very very good trait and if you need survival this is probably one of the best ones that easily slot of course if you want to just survive through spike damage and that's all that you really care about um and really need when it comes down to it invincible is a very very great way to make sure that you survive spike damage it stops spike damage for killing you for eight seconds every 120 seconds which is pretty nice plus a significant extra hole and chill healing to basically heal yourself back up um once once you go to super low H hp um and this is really nice especially on hsc when you have invisitorps that are basically meant to take out tanks so if you have this trait that you, you don't have to worry about invisitorps one shot in you um, cold hearted is 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 another one that it's highly recommended for a lot of ox to bat tanking builds um if you're a dps build at this point in star trek online there are better traits for you to pick frankly but if you're a tanking build debuffing enemies and letting your dps captains do lots of extra damage because you've debuffed them is something that a lot of dps dps captains will highly value from you keep in mind it's a fomo starship right now it's not available through Mud's Market. It was available through an old um, winter event. I'm, I'm sure at some point, Cryptic will add it to, to, to Mud's Market for, for tanks to basically add it and, and acquire. Although the, the Lucari ship, I think, is a much higher value and more important thing for, for them to add first just because the Protomatter console is just so um, important to have for, for most tanks inside the game. It also allows you and your allies to use controlled countermeasures as a um, reputation trait um, freely. It is one of the best bonus, da bonus damage um, traits. And if you have cold hearted, it's guaranteed to basically be able to be going off against enemies. Basically, what it comes down to the stacks up to, up to five times from your energy weapons. And that minus, it's really the focus is the minus 10 um, re resistance. That times five is minus 50 damage resistance on, on, on enemies. That is really valuable to have, frankly. All right, so going for the more situational ones where you're more probably thinking about very specific situations where you might want to use these types of things. Improved gravity roll is, is one of the first ones here. Um, I was one of the bigger advocates for, for this type of, type of trait. The problem with, with this trait, frankly, is that out, is that it's, it's a really, really strong trait. It's great. The problem is if you're in a map where you're just like finishing the map in like two minutes and then you have like four different areas you're going to, um, having a longer gravity well isn't quite as important when all the enemies are dying before that increased duration is actually going to matter. You have a gravity well that lasts for 40 seconds, but enemies die within the first 20. The extra, the extra 20 seconds doesn't really matter, does it? And so that's 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 why it's not as strong 
and I see in an HSC, if you're going to a lot of other maps where it's like you have to sit and park and blow up enemies for like three, four, five minutes, this is a fantastic trait. Fantastic trait. It's here just because the most popular DPS maps, the parts you have to things is ISC and HSC. And it's just not as strong in those maps. Um, um, another filler science trait is Checkmate. It's available through from the Yorktown, or if you have Legendary Odyssey, it's another trait from that too. Um, control abilities give you extra exotic damage and projectile damage. So if you have a Psy Torp build, it's totally fine to slot this. If you have a Psy Energy build, um, go to the Legendary um, Crossfield, and you'll have a, a, a little bit better trait for you. What um, This trait has two parts. Control abilities um, give you haste, and attack pattern abilities give you exotic damage. So basically, if you have an attack pattern and control and value energy weapons as well as exotic um, damage, this is a really, really nice trait to slot. It wasn't one I used to recommend, frankly, because it was from the promo crossfield, but now that it's from the le legendary bundle as well to be, to be, to be acquired, if you're doing Psy Energy and are, and are on Fed's side, this is, this, is not, this is not a bad trait to slot. Um, another situation one is Hit and Run. Um, this gives a decent amount of bonus damage and crit severity after evasive maneuvers goes, goes on cooldown, um, which is decently viable because, I mean, evasive maneuvers is pretty spammable because of the Emergency Con Hologram, along with Emergency Powered Engines, which is meta in, in a lot of various builds inside the game. Keep in mind, you have to burn through the time that Basement Rivers is up first. And I mean, it's just, and yeah. So because of that, 20% bonus all damage, the third of crit severity isn't gonna be up that whole time. Maybe at most 10% bonus all damage and 15% crit severity is what you could, you could consider actually being what the, what the stats would be from the Starship. But because a lot of you do energy-based builds, I mean, this is, this is a meta thing for a lot of builds. And so it's not like you have to adjust your build for this trade. Shield Overload is one of the unfortunate traits. Um, I highly, almost over overvalued this trait when I when I started the game. It's kind of sad looking at how, or maybe it's good. It's looking at how far I've come in my builds in the past like two and a half, three years since this is a sense of started making stuff um, on, on on this channel. Before I highly valued this trait. Now I've now I have made it a much less of a value, and especially when you consider. The extra shield hardness you get from the Endeavor system now. Um, if you really need resistance on your shields, just invest in, in, in the skill tree plus the extra shield hardness from the Endeavor system. That plus your shield power, you're going to be getting most of what you actually need. That plus much power to shields is going to be you're, you're going to get pretty close, if not to pretty much the regular damage resistance cap for shields. Um, Best Hope of the Empire actually has some situational use usefulness. It is a bit trickier to use than what Cryptic initially described this trait as because when I saw this trait, I, I initially saw, oh, hey, on my cannon scatter volley builds, I can just slot in a dummy beam overload trait, like how you know some other builds slot in dummy beam overload or dummy cannon scatter volley builds, and they can get a proc on, on their weapon. The problem with this particular trait, as well as the relationship to system redundancies with both of these traits here, it's not just um, using beam overload or a spinal lance. You have to have it actually go off, and so which means you have to have a, a um, what's it called, a a beam actually on your build or something like a beam, like the morphogenic energy weapon. That can use beam of beam of load um, in order for you to actually get the bonus damage. Once it actually shoots, then you get the bonus damage and temporary HP. I'm not sure I fully, I, I, I don't really agree and like that mechanic, but that's what Cryptic has decided to do. And so if you're using a can scatter volley build that is going to be using a three piece that uses an Omni, like the pol the Polaron, like Polaron builds with the Morphogenic set or the two low by sets, the low by sets for for plasma with the ultimate set, or the Baul set 
for anti-proton. If you're if you, you, you using one of those, those energy centers for can scaffold light tanking, Best Hope of the Empire is a trait you can slot if you wish. You don't have to, but you can. Um, outside of those builds, I highly discourage you even trying to bother, frankly. I, I just don't feel it's worth it for the other builds. Unconventional Tactics, if you have it and need it, uh, and just have a trait you just need, need to fill for a while, it's fine. The problem with it is that it's 20% it's bonus damage on an ability that has a 60, 60 second cooldown, so it's only effectively 5% bonus damage, but it's bonus all damage at least, so at least there's something. It's something as a filler while you're trying to get better traits. Going the extra mile is an interesting one. Um, if you happen to have an Agents of Yesterday captain and got all the stuff in it, I missed it by less than 12 hours when that came out. I'm still mad about that. I'm still waiting for Cryptic to do a rerun event of that, and Cryptic hasn't done it in years. Still upset about that, but... The third rank of having 20% hole and shield healing and the potential to have an extra 20% max HP whenever you heal yourself above Nipes' hole, which in my builds that's constantly happening. That just seems really valuable to have. And it's actually a tempting trait if I had the 20%. I'd only 15%, I don't feel like it's quite it's it's kind of like on, on the borderline of just 50% um, increased healing and max HP. But that's just me. Um you get this from the Merit Worker spec. If you have the Ages of Yesterday, then, then you get the extra um, rank. Rhythmic Rumble is from the Ricean Corvette. It is one of my favorite starships inside the game. It's got like the most customization options available, um, frankly, inside of the game. So if you're wanting something like that, as, as customization options, it is definitely an option. Keep in mind, um, the reason why it's here is because of, of the trait, and it's basically the KD of alternatives to honor dead, as long as you're willing to at least move a little bit. If you're sitting and doing nothing, it's going to do nothing for you. So you just need to keep that in mind, frankly. Um, I consider it a slight budget alternative to honor dead because you buy the starship once, and it's an alternative that you can put on multiple KDF captains. And assuming that you buy it on sale. If you're only getting a starship for one captain, our dead can situation be cheaper on, on the exchange for you um, through buying the sarcophagus dreadnought carrier. Um, another search rate as, as a potential is superior area denial. Um, for us as tanks, it's basically the, the poor man's version of cold hearted. Keep in mind if you're doing a beam or if you're doing a uh, direct energy weapon based build, you'll be using fire will or scatter volley anyway. And what it's saying is it, whenever you use one of those, those things, your, your hanger pets will get fire, fire will one and scatter volley one. So that is, that, that is pretty potent. And it, it, it gives a significant debuff to your energy weapons for 20 seconds. And so this is basically the poor man's variant of cold hearted for KDF captains um, because KDF captains don't have to buy the mirror angle. So this is a, this is a nice trade for KDF captains, frankly. Um, Vaultane Ambition is a nice filler trade as well. If, you, if you're buying a six to fly anyway, this is a nice filler trade. Keep in mind, most enemies won't be at below 20% health for very long. There are some situational enemies like the Zenkethi that get very resistant at, at very resistant at low HP, that this might be very nice to make sure that, that you can finish them off at those H, as those lower HP values. Outside of them, I think there are other traits that are just that just you, you can just, just get a lot more mileage out of, frankly. There's also critical systems. Again, it's another trait that I don't have because I didn't get a temporal agent, because I was off by less than 12 hours to get one. Yay for being really busy during college. Um, but the, its stats are not bad. 3% crit chance, 15% crit severity on using a, using any emergency power ability. 
basically any build in the game is going to be using some, port, some form of emergency power, whether it's emergency power to power to ox or emergency power to weapons. Something like that, you're probably going to be using some sort of emergency power ability. So it's not bad. Basically, a slightly worse version of um, of the trade from the Tal Shiar um, battle cruiser. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, we also have weapons hot deflectors the full. It's okay, um, and. And you'll see in the in the Florian build, you don't you don't necessarily have to use emergency power to engines to tank. You can get a get away without it. Some DPS captains are going to complain when they're used to captains with emergency power to engines as their tank, and then then, then the final one that doesn't have one, they'll be like, "Why are you so slow? You aren't over here yet, and we're firing and we're getting hurt." Like, yeah, well, get used to it. Some tanks don't use emergency power to engines, and it, and it is just the way it is. I, I do have a slide at the end of an alternative that I hope Cryptic uses at some point. I really want Cryptic to really use one certain building that, that like no one uses anymore. But I mean, the, the traits sounds okay, 15% haste, but that's if you're at 150 shield power. I really want something like that amount of haste if you're at 100 shield power. That's just me personally. If they increased it to 30% haste at 100 shield power, so you would have. 15 to 20 or 20 percent haste at 100 shield power then i think this would be a fine trade frankly because that plus the decent amount of secondary shields would be, be worthwhile it is a decent amount of secondary shields so when you consider this is a promo ship a single account or, or a single character unlocked promo ship for really a, an okay trait i don't feel it's quite worthwhile the reason why I, I would buy this ship is for its console which i'm not really, i'm not going to mention in in this video because I'm only going to be showing builds that I actually have. And unfortunately, so that means I unfortunately can't really show off a console in screenshots that I don't have. So it there's some slide enforcement stuff up there. Anyway, um, this next section is for space traits. Here's some rough stuff here. Keep in mind, especially here for this, the good and situational tra um, traits for free. I mostly am not using. I'm mainly using stuff from the exchange because those are just way more powerful. I just have it there because I just value those things in those specific spots. All stuff in strong truly is strong. If you have access to those and can use them in your build, you should be using them. So first off, when it comes to exotic based builds, particle manipulator is on the par of a starship trade in terms of in terms of how strong the ability is. It is just it is legitimately that strong. It is so strong. Um, even if you have a budget science build, as I've even shown on, on a channel before, you don't have to even go to the fleet or to the exchange or upgrade anything to have a build have at least 250 EPG skill. You, you really don't. And so getting that 50% crit chance for exotic abilities is not hard. It is not hard at all. Um, it's really how high your crits vary is going to go in terms of how good this trait, how how high the ceiling of this trait actually is. But honestly, at a certain point, just stacking more clicky consoles that do damage is really going to be better for you for overall damage and threat than just trying to stack super high EPG levels for high crit severity for this. Um, Fleet Coordinator is the, is, is the very solid trait that basically everyone uses just because it's 10% bonus all damage and, and it's a free trait. I'm sure at some point we'll get so many ridiculously am amounts of trades that eventually we'll probably stop slotting this, but it's probably going to be a while. Um, point Blade Shot is kind of the same thing. Um, it's only really super valuable for beam builds. Cannon Sky Volley builds have to be a little bit farther back to make sure that enemies stay within their really narrow cone of damage, but beam builds can be super close to enemies and it's not that big of a deal. Conservation of energy is, is, is a nice build as well. If, if you're a science captain doing an exotic build, then, can, then congratulations. You've, you've, got a f you've got a free 30% bonus damage to your a a a exotic powers. Basically, every, every enemy in the game will do some sort of energy damage at, at, at elite difficulty, so it's not hard to stack this up and keep this stacked. It realistically is not that hard. 
So it is really, really nice. Grace Under Fire is one that I kind of wish Mirax of Paris just had this inherently as part of the ability. I think it really should have just been part of the ability. That's just me. But basically what this does is it changes Mirax of Paris from its super long cooldown to its cooldown is now basically 90 seconds. And basically after you use it and whenever you basically get spike damage in in the game it resets the cooldown once every 90 seconds so um it does make the max repairs basically feel like a regular console clicky um survival building it is really the big reason to pick engineer over other captains when it comes to energy-based tanking if you don't really care about, about miraculous repairs pick science or pick tactical Um, good, good day to die is the exchange trade for for tactical captains. This is pretty much a must slot when it comes to tactical builds. All of them basically need this. Otherwise, I go down fighting. It's kind of worthless to have. Just kind of the way it is, frankly. Um, a blade of shell is one of the best survival on um, traits inside of the game when it comes to space traits. Um, in fact, in a lot of various tanks, I've even noticed this, noticed this on Reddit, this is one of the best single sources of healing inside the game. And it's a starship trait. Or sorry, sorry, it's just a regular space trait. You don't have to really have other things stacking with this. It's just a very solid trait on its own right. So, And it's damage pre-resist, which makes this even more valuable because it's not like, you know, on our dead, which is post-resist. This is pre-resist damage. So if you have temporary HP, temporary shields, resistances on, on your hull, this is still going to get a trigger and do a lot of decent healing. So this is extremely valuable. And of course, we have to add in Intelligence Asian Attaché. This is another extremely strong, elite, um, staple ability now. I don't have this on my science tanks yet. I probably will add it eventually, though. Um, once I save up enough energy credits with those captains to buy the buy it for them. For for a lot for a lot of my tank builds, it's, very, it's based on what they have, not say what is the most optimal or or whatever. Um, but when it comes to good traits, we have really some more traits here. Beam barrage is bonus beam weapon damage. Keep in mind this one as well as cannon training and um, beam training can all be upgraded at your fleet to do a little bit extra. I'm damaged as well. Not much, but it's something. Um, Terran targeting systems is one of the best in slot damage traits for space right now. You get an extra 15% crit severity. Whenever you get critted, you lose about you lose a little bit of speed, which is a bit of a downside. But you know, it a slight downside to have a little bit of extra extra damage is not the end of the world, frankly. Unconventional systems is a really strong ability for, for science tanks. You've got so many um, clickies for most tanks anyway that this can be useful, but you need a lot of control boys for this to really pull off really well. So it's it's much better for science tanks than other tanks, but it is still decently useful for, for everyone. Um, Enlightened is another trait. More exotic damage and more healing. Both are useful for us. Positive feedback loop. More exotic damage and more healing, but it's based upon it, this, this is healing for our active abilities instead of for passive hold healing. So, if you if you're if, if you're timing your heals offsetting from your actual damaging abilities, this can be decent on you. Otherwise, you know that stuff might just be better. Repair crews is is a trait that I typically slot if I don't use honored dead or rhythmic rumble in my starship traits. If I'm using either of those traits in my starship traits, then I will ignore, ignore re, re, repair crews. Repair, repair crews is, is, is pretty valuable if, if you don't have one of those traits in your space or star, starship traits. Adaptive offense, it's basically a slightly worse version of, of Terran targeting systems because this basically just turns into a bit extra crit severity. It goes from the 2.7% crit chance into 9% crit severity. And Terran Targeting Systems has 15% crit severity. So 
I, I consider that a bit better than, the, the, than this one. And even on direct energy weapon builds for, for tanking, you're, you're critting quite a bit. Most of my tanks are sitting at around 40% plus crit chance. So even, even without other stuff going on, so you're going to be critting a decent amount. Battle Battletech patch, if you have a lot of whole heals and such, this is nice to have. If you're trying to survive fully on like temporary HP and like lifesteal on under ship, then don't worry about this. As for situational stuff, of course, we have like Raman Operative for Romulan Captains, Infiltrator for Riemann Captains, you know, both those. If you if you have a cloak, they're nice to have. If not, there are, there are other traits that can, can be better for you. Um, Galvanized Munitions is, is a fun one that I like to slot on my Cannon Scatter Volley builds because my damage ideally is just going to be on my forward front shield facing and this gives me a lot of of of, da of, of my damage going into that shield heal which I feel is, is, is pretty valuable frankly. Cannon Scatter Volley Tanks should probably slot this. Everyone else should uh, avoid this like, like, like the plague frankly. Menacing is one that i've found some situational uses for there are there are some runs in agency in particular that i've had some issues with not having enough hp for some of the spike damage coming in and slotting in menacing allowed my threatening stance to stack fast to give me the extra hp i needed to more easily survive through those particular cues so it's a bit more situational in my opinion um but in those, in those situations it actually is a decent solution to some issues if you're not going to be off tanking and needing threatening stance to stack super super fast for its temp for its extra hp that, that that it gives you by the way um there are much better traits for you to choose psychological warfare it depends upon the map and depends upon your build frankly if you've done the math and done the, the queue a bunch of times you've realized hey my gravity well is like 0.5 kilometers, you know, short of um, of what needs to be the, the pull in all these enemies in this particular spot. And I need a little bit of extra, you know, range. I and mean, I can't really affect my build too much. This is a nice ability to slot. A lot of times you're frankly going to find that in most queues, you don't need that, that extra distance. ISC is probably your best scenario of where you, where you probably want it, frankly. Most of the queues don't really need it too much. Duos Fervor is, is a nice one. I actually slot this in most of my builds. Um, it's more valuable, frankly, for higher DPS groups. Lower DPS groups don't have a lot of, of, of value this. But of course, if you're doing elite queues, then ideally you're going to have high, high DPS for all, for all of your tanks anyway. It's not something you necessarily need to slot, but it, it's a nice thing to slot. Inspiration Leader, I don't typically use. I know other, other tanks highly value this thing because of the tend to most starship skills i have like a stack several times i generally have pretty bad rng it's just the way that it seems to be for me and this just doesn't that this just doesn't show very much like at all so for me this is this is not worthwhile enough i know there are other tanks that will fully wholeheartedly disagree agree with me on on this tree but that's just me and my personal experience on it Lafulic and Cocoon, if you're fighting the Undine, this is this is a really this is this is a nice trait to have. If you're not fighting the Undine, you probably shouldn't be fighting the Undine or the Zencathy, you shouldn't be slotting this this trait at all. Into, into the breach is fine. Um Again, this has the, the issue of some of the other starship traits that you have to actually defeat the enemy and actually get the last hit pretty much to get, to get that, that spreading damage resistance debuff by seven seconds. So it's a bit better for science builds, frankly, for us to make sure that this pulls off or if you use can scatter volley builds that have higher DPS, frankly, overall. This is not a bad thing to slot either for those. If you're doing, doing a broadside beam build, probably not. And then self-modulating fire, I didn't even bother to get it picture for this because it's only up 10 seconds out of every 45 seconds because it's got, it's got a 45 second total duration or um before you can use it again it and it's after a crit you get some pen for 10 seconds 
once every 45 seconds. So it, it's not up a lot. And we also have things like, like the, the, the Tilly shield now, which gives you extra shield time as well. So I don't feel this is quite as valuable as it used to be inside the game. Preference of AI tech, if you're doing a direct edge weapon science build, it's, it's great. For other builds, it's very situational. Okay, so continuing on for devices and consoles. Here's a bunch of devices for you. As a tank, I highly recommend Temporal Negotiator. It's a Delta Recruit device. So if you didn't do Delta Recruit stuff, you, don't, you won't have access to this. This is very nice for in, in, in a pinch if you need a bunch of your survivor abilities back up for, for, for your bridge officer abilities. This can allow you to cut their, their cooldowns in half. So a lot of them can be up really quickly. If you don't have it, not as huge of a deal, but it is something that's really nice to have. Alongside that, for consumables, um, an energy amplifier or exotic particle flood gives you bonus to either energy damage or exotic damage. Really nice to have. It's also one for projectile damage too if you're doing a torpedo-based tank. I won't, won't be showing those in this video because they're not fun for me, but those consumables also exist. We also have reactive armor catalyst. Um, that and deuterium surplus are both craftable once you complete certain missions inside the game. Check the S2 wiki if you're curious about what missions you need to complete to get those devices. Basically, the reason why reactive armor catalyst is really nice to have is because there is technically a um, battery available in the game that that also that also does a heal for you. Unfortunately, batteries have a certain cooldown between being able to use use other other, other batteries. Reactive armor armor catalyst. Is it just its own weird thing? And so it's not technically a battery. It doesn't have the cooldown restrictions of using that alongside a regular battery. That's why that's why we use Rector Rock House instead of the well, whatever, whatever battery one that, that exists that gives you it gives you a heal. Deuterium Servos is nice because it gives you extra maneuverability whenever you need it to get to get around like IC or H to C a little bit faster. The Kubazi Mirror Transponder is just a nice device that you can use like right, right before it at TFO stars to potentially get a little bit of bonus damage and extra speed speed and turn. Not the biggest thing in the world, but you know, it's something. Um, keep in mind, distress skulls can be used from your inventory, so don't put them in your device slots. They have a, they have a five minute cooldown each and they have a two minute shared cooldown. So you can only use a maximum of one of these every two minutes. Um, the Phase Wing 4 Beacon and Delta Alliance Reformers Beacon are, are the best DPS options. And the nearest pirate, pirate Distress Call is the um, option to use if, if you need basically a couple of extra heals. You, you do that one and it gives you, gives you some healing. Beacon of Kalos is, is the worst one by far, but its upside is you don't need to finish a mission to get the Beacon of Kalos. If you did the, did the event stuff from before, and especially with leveling, it is it is a great distress call to have when leveling just to get through certain enemies a little bit faster inside the game. We also have other common batteries that you could slot instead of the crafted ones here. Um, and they give 75 of a given power for regular types and large ones give 100 of a given power. Um, you can either buy them from vendors or you can just get you, you, you can just get them through random RNG drops. There are four different types, weapon shields, and just auxiliary for the four different power types. There's also the red, red marker capacitor, um, which is just 25 to all power levels. Keep in mind, all um, batteries have a one minute um, recharge and like you can't use that same battery again for a, in, 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 in another 60 seconds. So the most batteries just last 10 seconds like these ones back here. Red matter actually lasts for 20. So there is that. There's also the subspace field modulator, but because there's a lot of other ways to get damage resistance and defense in the game, I don't feel it's quite as, as valuable for the, the device slots, frankly. There are also many techs. Most of these are complete garbage, but I feel like it's enough to mention these guys. The only one I really consider worthwhile is the Temporal Distortions mini tech, which basically gives a weakened version of the clicky from the Temporal Rift Stabilizer, which is from the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought, by the way. It gives a weaker version of of this clicky through through your devices instead of through a instead of through a console so there is definitely that for you if you're thinking about that it's pretty expensive to get more and more of those devices so yeah most case scenarios you're probably not going to worry about these things at all but i'm just mentioning it because 
it technically exists. Anyway, in terms of other consoles, I'll be going briefly through the best things in Stow consoles that I've talked about before on this channel. And of course, we'll have some of the other strong universal consoles, some stuff from the fleet. Um, some three-piece sets. I don't think I actually copied and pasted those sets into this video. Um, yeah, and then there's, of course, there's a bunch of, 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 of exotic consoles that I'll also be going through briefly, too. Uh, when it comes to strong sets, the flagship set is, is by far the best inside the game. Bar none when it comes to tanking. When, when it just comes down to it, 30% on um, damage from the, the, from the, from the three-piece set combined with what's already going on with every single one of these consoles being fairly good when it comes to tanking. Flagship tactical computer is, is, an, is a nice haste console. Timeless Stabilizer helps out with cooldowns and a little bit of haste. Adaptive Emergency Systems is a slightly weaker but still decent alternative to the DPRM console, which of course you can slot with the DPRM console if you so choose on your Starship. So it is, it is pretty nice. It's only the Adapting Wave emitter that is not good, um, but I mean three of the four consoles are super strong. If you want something like the flagship technology set for other Starships, the Dominion console set is the way to go. You don't have haste stuff on them, but you do get at least some extra bonus damage stuff in debuffing two enemies and one nice survival console. Um, unlike in that video, because it was like changed like a month or two after that video came out, it was changed so that all Geminar and Geminar Vanguard consoles can be used on all starships. So yes, this Dominion console set can be used on all starships. It also means if you're looking through that video, the Dominion starships in those ranks would no longer be in those spots because they were there because they used the, the dominion set now that that, they, that you can use any starship can use the dominion set those starships will actually no longer even be on the list period so there is that to think about if, if you are curious as well the um dominion coordinates protocol and dominion command interface the ones without these passive stats on them are available through the geminar um gamma um big pack the one that, that's like 15k zen like not on sale or 12k zen whatever whatever price it is the one that, that gives you gemini vanguard officers um if you if, if you buy that pack and and go to the tier 5 starships available on um, the, the tier 5 version of the strike wing escort and the dreadnought carrier are available through th through that pack in in, in the sea storm as an accountant lock reclaimable on um, starship so you you can try out the on um, these two consoles clickies to see if you like how how they but they perform if you're considering this to see if it's worthwhile before you spend a bunch of energy credits to get three tier six starships just for one single character console set just saying just something to think about uh, of course we have the 31st century set the big thing for this set is obviously the chrono attack counting capacitor if this is in my opinion, probably the best taunt console in the entire game. So what's going on is that, like most consoles, this has a two minute cooldown, but the clicky in total lasts for 30 seconds. So it is pretty powerful. It is really powerful. Um, yeah, you first off have a 15 seconds of, th that is a taunt plus heal. So this is actually the taunt part of it. And then once the taunt ends, you get bonus directed damage plus extra crit chance and crit severity. So basically, it, it is a forced taunt for the first little bit that, that, that also gives you a heal. And then after that ends, you get a lot of, of category 2 damage. It's raw category 2 directed and injury weapon damage, and then just crit chance and crit severity for all, all um, types of damage to the point that you should be able to get enough extra damage to be able to hold threat after, even after the taunt is over. And so it's pretty much a 30 second taunt. And so a 30 second taunt that's up every two minutes. Yeah, it's a really, really strong console to slot, frankly. And the two piece, um, if you use one of the other consoles, gives you an extra 10% um, weapon damage and 3% whole HP. Title says a stabilizer is basically a budget version of, of the DPRM. So, or it's not to be, I'm sorry, the Domino console from the Bajoran Interceptor. So, it is a very nice console to have too. Um, 
I, I, I don't use Domino on all of my builds um, in, in this video just because I think that's a little boring to do, frankly. But um, you will see some other similarities. Um, we also have the Enhanced Weapon System Efficiency set. It's really just the Shield of Sword Fusion Generator that we're going to be using for one build in, in this video. Um, I don't use the two pieces because it's it's a bit bit of, of, of a cost. I'm losing another console just to get those passives. There are better things for our slots for it, frankly. For the, for the not cool set, it's really just the Temporal Distress Beacon that is super, super o OP, frankly. It is basically a reverse shield polarity clicky that gives you immunity to all damage instead of just energy damage. So it is super, super strong. Um, if you're going to use the Nakul Battle Cruiser or the, or, or the Nakul Science Vessel, this is this is a best in slot console for the two slot. It's really, really strong. There are also stuff for, from from the Breen Starships that, that are pretty nice. Um, and of course, there's also the Chronicle Particle Exciter. These, a lot of these types of consoles are stuck to specific starships, which really sucks. Because I, I basically never use this console ever because... Sure, the Temporal Cruiser that can use this console is pretty much just an inferior version of the 31st Century Dreadnought Cruiser that is from the Sea Store. So it's like... Uh, this console is great, but it's not as good as that taunt console from over there. <laughs> So yeah, it is just the way it is. Um, we also have the water repair ship, which can actually be used on tier six starships now. I'm liking that video because we have a tier six Voth flight they carry and a tier six Voth science vessel. When it comes from a defensive standpoint, the Voth science vessel is technically, if if you only care about just tackle team and you're just going to do full science abilities from there, the Voth science vessel actually is one of the best science tanks in the game in that aspect because you have temper operative plus um plus plus command in it too. so it actually is decently good for, for that the voth rampart is a really nice flight deck carrier as well just saying the water repair ship basically if you have if you have a one shot that takes out your ship you use use the clicky and and you're fully back into the fight no problem in that exact same spot Play of Armor is just, a, in my opinion, a slightly weaker version, and you have to be proactive, thinking that a crit's going to come, or if all else fails, you just use it, and you're nearly in, invulnerable while this is going. You do need to use torpedoes on, on the Legendary Voyager in order to be able to use this console effectively, because it takes your edge weapons offline and shields offline. So, using of your shields are basically down, basically exhausted anyway, and if you, if you have a, a torpedo-based build, then... The other debuffs don't really matter, and you have over 90% resistance on this while this is going off. In terms of other consoles, keep in mind, for Dredger Energy Weapon builds, you want to use a Fleet console because you can get the 39.4% cap 1 damage, plus some other additional thing on top of it. Whether that's 2% crit chance with locators, 10% crit severity with exploiters, or their sort of formatted matrix on passive, plus a little bit of cap 1 projectile damage alongside that too. From colony tactical consoles which is what i highly recommend frankly in terms of non-fleet stuff to put in Lorca's custom fire controls is is a best in slot console frankly and the morph giant mage's controller is best in slot for the polaron three piece of course the dprm is pretty much the absolute best um in slot tanking console inside the game promoter is is the best um aoe healing console inside the game Technically, Reiter Structural Capacitor is a smidget better in terms of whole healing, but that one doesn't do shield healing. This one does whole and shield healing, so it is extremely valuable. Domino is a, is a ridiculously good um, DPS console as well. Technically, if we're going to be super technical here, all my builds probably should be using, using Domino somewhere in it. But I, but I again, think that that's really boring. Um, in terms of other consoles... Um, Sustained Radiant Field is actually pretty pretty potent um, if you're going to be doing lifesteal based tanking. Um, almost all of my tank builds nowadays use whole image refractors, and it's not because of the and it's not because of the image refractor's clicky ability. That is a very much garbage ability and, and a something you just don't use. The thing is for this console, I have it here entirely because of the temporary H HP aspect. I've been, I've been able to get hundreds upon hundreds of thousands temporary HP just from this console alone. You can get lots and lots of temporary HP just from this console. 
Um, so yeah. For dredge and, and, and weapon builds, this is really, really nice to have. For exotic builds, please keep in mind, do not use Tipler Cylinder. I, I, I know it is, is a best-in-stock console for um, DPS si um, exotic builds. Because you're you're taken out of combat and untargetable for like seven seconds, this is really, really, really bad. So please don't slot this if you're going to be an exotic base tank. Cool. All right, cool. We also have some other consoles that are great for exotic based tanking. Delphic, Delphic Tier Generator and Auxiliary Ejection Assembly have both exotic damage. Ion Storm Generator actually scales decently well with, with exotic, plus you have threat mean. You have additional threat generation from that too, which is actually pretty nice. I was really, really, really disappointed in this console until I realized that this scaled really well with EPG. And I'm like, oh, hey, this is actually a nice, nice thing to have. Kind of same thing with like cascading the cascading console and the multi target target tractor arrays. They're all great. Cascading gravimetric disruptance comes from the C store, so I value that a bit higher than these other ones here. The tractor arrays console is extremely high threat though, so if you have access to it, then by all means slot it. Subatomic disruptance is from a single character unlock thing from, from the exchange, so up to you guys whether it's worth it to get that console or not. Of course, for some more defenses, we have the regenerative integrity field, which is basically miraculous repairs for non engineering captains, and it's only from the Kamali Samsar cruiser. Reiter special capacitor is basically a virtual clarity, but for your hull instead of your shields, and its, and, its, and its heal is not quite as good as shields. So if you take too much damage to your hull, it, you, your hull is going to, to decrease. Plus, storm module is an, another great um, a, a exotic clicky. It does like make the screen almost like in, almost like really hard to see through. So that's its big, big downside. But if you don't care about that, it does do decent for you. And of course, when it comes to low buy store stuff, BioNeural Ultimate Modified Storm Processor for crit chance and accuracy. Accuracy is great to, to counteract all the accuracy buffs on Beam Firewall. Then of course, Tiger Unit Convert for another. Um, crit, crit chance, crit severity console too. All right. With that said, <laughs> we're almost two hours into this and just starting to get into into the build. So I'll try to get through this as quickly as, as as I can. Here's some TLDR in terms of the various weapons and things that I recommend. Feel free to to go to the PDF or pause the video here if if you want to look at these in particular. Antiproton and plasma are are the best for. Your DPS types of, 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 of tanking, disruptor and, and phaser are still solid options too. Polaron is the best for survival or for budget tanking, frankly. PS of Polaron is just ridiculously good. Bodwork has a very good shield debuff as well for to help your projectile based captains in in um in IC as well. Tetron is, is object for the weakest energy type though. Alright, so to start off with, we're gonna show Florian's build. Now, as a caveat, Florian's build on, on Reddit uses the tier 6 Yorktown, not the Legendary Odyssey because this was made a few years ago. As thus, not all the traits and things are going to be updated for the modern stuff. Um, when it comes to bridge option abilities, all that I did was move them around to how they would work on the, on the Legendary Odyssey. Other than that, Nothing has really changed on, on his build besides that. And the fact that I did have to add a six starship trait, an extra device, and an extra console. For the six starship trait, because he uses attack pattern beta, I thought our Heart of Soul would work just fine. It's the Federation version of um, the one from the Sea Store Temple Operative um, warships. And because this is a phaser build on the Odyssey anyway, the 10% haste and 5% bonus phaser damage for a starter trait that just gives him more damage and doesn't affect his build at all, to me, makes the most sense. Alongside Mercy Weapon Cycle, Redirection Arrays, Invincible, Hits Remember, and Honor Dead for his other five starship traits that he had in his build. He's a tactical captain, so of course he's going to have go down fighting and, and some of these, these other traits here, like Inspiration Leader, Intense Focus, and Self Modulating Fire. In terms of this build itself, um, one th a couple things I am going to note here. I, I, I did make the project a little bit different for Victory's Life, but other than that, not, not too much. Um, keep in mind for his build, what you're going to see a lot is that we'll quite often have his attack, a tactical team one, some sort of, of attack pattern, so our, our energy spreader ability, 
if you have a, if you have a lieutenant commander of science, your options is either hazard emitters, trash beam repulsors, and like a higher photonic officer, or you're a slightly lower photonic officer for a gravity wall. Now it's worked by a duty officer for your your AOE ability. Trash beam repulsors is really nice for some um, elite queues. Gravity wall just happens to work for a lot more, and so I personally like gravity wall a little bit more personally. But that's just me. Um. I believe he made this vi he made this build prior to in 20 Tactical Matrices, which is why he built the ship the way that he did with redirection to race, which is only going to have his firewall up 75% of the time instead of 100%, like with the other three. Um, when it comes to this, the build itself, he is more for visual Barbie than for actual meta. So he, he used crafted phasers with the prolonged engagement phaser and Terran Task Force and Trilithian phaser to have basically the same looks for all eight of, of his phasers. As for his space set in, in, in particular, he uses the Colony Deflector and he basically followed the, the meta of the competitive stuff in, in that time. The difference was that he used the Elite Fleet Plasma Warp Core instead of using a competitive Warp Core. As for consoles, he's using the flagship three-piece reinforced armaments for the, the trilithium um, two-piece DPRM, proton matter, air structure capacitor, and regenerative integrity field. Keep in mind, he also put in point defensive armor warhead as one of his consoles. With the Yorktown, um, the Yorktown only had a base of two Tathal consoles. In my personal opinion, if he was building based upon the, the legendary Odyssey today instead of the Yorktown, he probably would have made the point defensive bar war had slot into another um, fleet tactical console instead. But that's just my opinion and conjecture to for for the best for the transfer. This is how that it would have been, and then for the extra um, dash universal um, slot, either a Vone Buddy locator or Locust Customer Control. So be what what to, what to put there. This was prior to the Discovery Legends reputation, by the way. That's why he didn't have Locust Customer Controls in there, in my personal opinion. In terms of um, skill tree, as I, as I said, I, I outlined what, what Florian's skill tree is earlier in, in, in the video. Feel free, feel free to go back to that spot if you're so curious about it. For duty officers, we have the Fabrication Engineer to increase the versatile player, player, player by 8 seconds. Every single tank build is going to have that. We have the Seal Distribution Officer that Type and Beta allows our, our weapons to heal us for 0.2% of our whole each, each shot, which is nice. We have Grog and Maul to have Tractor Mirror Pulsers pull instead of push. That's why we have, that's why he has Tractor Mirror Pulsers in the build instead of like on um, Gravity Wall. Then he has three Energy Weapon Officers for, for stacking crit chance and crit severity. For rep reputation traits, stuff that says different from my build, it's gonna, it will be Ox Power Offense and Enhanced Shield Penetration. I personally like to have weapons primary and shields as my secondary power instead of having, having to do auxiliary second. It's just the way that I am personally. Um, and so I don't like ox power offense on nine exotic builds. As, as for devices, um, he had tempo negotiator, radar, rheumatic capacitor, reactive armor catalyst, and the energy amplifier battery. Because his build does not have um, emergency power to engines in the build, I thought what that would be valuable to have for the extra device would be to do tier and surplus. So he has an extra device just to move around easier on the map. So yeah, that's basically Florian's build. This is my version of the Legendary Odyssey. Um, and these are the differences. I'm, I'm use, using Delta instead of Beta. And with all this, I changed start some stuff around a little bit. I have turned the Lieutenant Universal into Tactical instead of the Ensign Universal into Tactical. Um, otherwise, a lot of stuff here is pretty much the same in that we're using Tonic Officer 1 and Gravity Wall instead of Tonic Officer 2 and Tractor Beam, Tractor Beam Repulsors. I've added stuff in like Intelligent Agent Attaché and Active Office and Terran Targeting System. So otherwise, it's pretty much the same as what his build was, and that we're using Attack Parent Delta instead of Attack Parent Beta. Cool. All right. So moving on to other things here. The, the builds also changed a little bit here as well. Um, alongside the Terran Task Force beam and Trilithium beam, I'm using a Dark Matter Quantum because I'm using a torpedo build for a Lorca two-piece, and then along with five advanced phasers. Since this is from the Legendary Bundle anyway, we'll have access to the Legendary Temporal Flight Day Carrier, which will give us access to the advanced phasers. For my space set, I'm going for the more defensive route because this is a much more 
geared around being a turtle versus being a super DPS monster. So I feel just, just going with the Discovery 2Ps and then the Kobali 2Ps was, was the way to go. For my consoles, I'm using the Flash of 3Ps, Reinforced Armors for, for the 2Ps there for extra haste, DPRM and Protomatter, alongside whole image refractors here for most of these survival that I need. Alongside that, three Colony consoles and Lorca's Custom Fire Controls, and then one Vulnerability Exploiter. Colony consoles did exist at, at the time for Florian, but he went along the lines just having lots of clicky abilities and four whole heals versus having less of those and rely upon Colony consoles for more of your survival. That's, that's the way his philosophy was. I like Colony consoles myself personally. Then here are my traits. The changes is to add Tyler's duality for more crit, and then because I don't like ox investing in ox power when I don't have to, magnified firepower is really nice to have as well. Cool. All right. Yeah, in terms of active act, active rotation traits, the other thing that's that's changed is to add in the Disco Rips tethered non baryonic asteroid, just because in some aspects in IC it's nice to use that whenever you're going from the from one transformer to the other one just so that you can make sure that any stragglers, spheres, and probes are basically tethered by that, that asteroid and not really wandering off in, into the wild black yonder. Um, and I've also changed one device to add in the Kobayashi Maru instead of the Red, Red Matter Capacitor. I, I, don't, I don't feel that there's an extreme need to have two different batteries in the device slots, frankly. That's just me. Um, this is going to be, be pretty much my own this next build my only promo ship in, in in here i think i think a couple of you actually watched me get this when i was just opening loot boxes one day um or promo packs one day because i was just i guess i needed the low buy for a certain new set that had come out at a certain point and i randomly won a promo ship and i was like oh that's cool um well I, I rolled this low because I was building up a new KDF tune that I, I eventually would turn. I'm actually I'm working to turn into my new K, new KDF main. I'm like, huh? Well, it'd be nice to have a tier six D7. So sure, why not? Let's pick the D7 and make it work. And so, this is one of the more fun builds that I've made. Um, of course, if we're going KDF. I feel that going more offensive is is the way to go. With this particular build. For going Cannon Scar of Light, I think this is this might actually be one of my favorite builds that I've ever made um, of all my, all my starships because I'm, I've made, I've, I was able to make, be able to use a special ability in both of the specialist seats, and everything else just seems to move really smoothly. I'm using Cold Hearted and Superior Area Denial um, for double debuffing, frankly, um, out of the starship traits alongside you know History Remember, Emergency Weapon Cycle, Within Barrage, and Attack Power and, De Attack Power and Delta Prime. It is very, very offensive oriented. And so that's why I've got like allies missions in here to help with a little bit for its survival. But still, for a lot of my general rules, I like to have three whole heals in my, in my builds if possible. And this ship still has three whole heals with engineering team, hazard emitters, and rally point marker to help out with, with that survival a little bit more. So um, it is a nice, fun build. Um, when it comes to the overall stuff here for Disruptor is a, a decent way to go is, is just use use spirals. The turn task force disruptor dual cannons is fine as a one one to use. It's up to you as 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 whether you feel that it's worthwhile to slot or not. I'm still using some of the old meta stuff with elite um, colony deflector competitive engines with the um, disco reps on two piece. If I want to go super DPS oriented, I would replace the disco core with. I'm sorry, that should just be a warp core, not singularity core, but it should be a warp core with um, the fleet on the spy warp core. As for the consoles themselves, um, DPRM, proto matter, and whole image refractors, and also the um, domino clicky, and the rest of it is basically crit severity consoles and then tactical consoles. Pretty straightforward, um, and well, it's up to you as to whether you think that it needs. If you're going to copy this build, you might want more struggle cookies if if you feel the are a little bit too squishy because this does not have honored dead on it. So that is something to keep in mind. No, no honored dead, no oxysif. If you get too much spike damage, you are going to die. It is just the way it is with this particular build. I've also got a little bit of a variant that has used that uses honored dead and built a little bit differently, but yeah, anyway. As for the stuff here, it's pretty much the same. 
I am going to go into a little bit of a rant on, on hangar based stuff, just because I have talked about this in the past. This video didn't get a ton of views though, versus other videos of its comparable length and stuff, so a lot of you probably didn't take the time to watch the hangar pet section, because you probably got bored. So what it comes down to, especially for a lot of hangar pets, you're going to find that going from normal to advanced to elite, a lot of times isn't always worth it. Because going higher ranks doesn't raw increase the durability of, of any of the, of the hanger pets and doesn't raw increase the damage. So you actually have to have to look at each pet whenever they would get up whenever you go to like the next rank or whatever or find the next different rank as to whether it's actually gonna be worth it to do so. Because for instance, the difference between advanced and elite here pretty much is that one has rapid fire. But you're changing out a cannon with with a turret. Which because the, these pets were fixed on their on their AI is actually a DPS decrease. So sure it's got rapid fire, but because I'm already using a trait, by the way, that you know Spirit Arizona that's already gonna give it it Firewall one and Scatter Volley one, you know, it's not really important that it's got rapid fire because it's already gonna be getting an enhancement anyway. So Overall, from the actual DPS numbers, the advance is actually the best option to go here. I, I, I could have gone with other, other squadrons that used, um, you know, beams instead. I mean, this is a KDF ship. I want to have fun in a KDF ship, so I'm going to be using KDF pets. So uh, alongside the advanced juice, um, I, want, I am using the elite Ning Tao support frigate because it's basically a, a bird of prey um, um, hanger pet. Um, the important thing here is that this um, either of these pets you can do to a team store here. The big aspect of this pet is I'm picking a frigate here because I mean, flight deck carriers is considered a, a full carrier for cryptic apparently, which is interesting. And so I can gimp it and use these fun new support frigates on the Disco D7. The big part of these frigates is that they have access to Suppression Barrage 3. So I don't like as long as, as a ship has two hangar bays, I no longer have to worry about having suppression barrage three as a potentiality in, in my builds anymore. That's that's the big change, frankly, versus in in the past. It basically also means that commander command is now quite a bit, bit weaker than it used to be in the past. Because a lot of the better tanks anyway are gonna be flight deck carriers, and flight deck carriers can use this pet as, as one of your hangar bays. And then you basically have a pseudo suppression barrage three already in your build without actually having to sacrifice a bridge office ability for it. Because suppression barrage three is a, a commander ability. Most starships only have one commander ability. So there is that. Technically, a DPS optimal way for cannons and stuff would be to use the Geminar Sport Frigate and Geminar Squadrons, but I like my Space Barbie and I like to have the Klingon ship with Klingon pets. Just saying, um, normally, like outside of the newest pets, um, my general rules is at this point with the, with the testing that I've done, because I've done a lot of testing on most of the, of the hanger pets in the game at this point now, besides a couple of ones from my promo ships. Um, TLDR is avoid pets with cloaks. The AI is, is dumb with them. Besides like the super new ones, like from the, the, the new um, squadrons and the new support frigates, Cryptic took some time to fix those because they saw some of the backlash with how disappointed we were in, in the starships, but at least we were excited about the hangar pets. So they're trying to make us and keep us happy with at least one aspect of, of the ship. When it comes to buffing hang, 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 hangar pets, keep in mind, if, if you aren't going to buff them, standard fighters, like fighters are generally better or the, or the higher DPS frigates. If you do plan on buffing your hangar pets, your the various squadron pets are generally going to be your best option um in my testing thus far the ones that have performed the best have been the it, for 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 fighter squadrons with with beam weapons the disco connie and disco d7 squadrons are equally good um for cannon weapons the gemini of vanguard support carrier squadrons seem to, to perform basically the best if you don't have access to fighter squadrons and we just don't like the fighter squadrons, 
I mean, there's a couple of fire squadrons there for free or from the new Ramos reputation anyway that you could get a bit, a bit on, on, on the weaker side for cannon based squadrons, but it exists. Um, if you're going to do that and you're going to enhance your buffs or hang your DPS, look for fighters that don't have um, like your AOE weapon enhancements like Fireball or Scatter Volley or something like Superior, superior Area Denial. Um, look, for, look for a pet like that because a lot of, of the pets were recently rebalanced to be roughly the same DPS as a baseline for all of them based upon what, what they are at those various ranks. So that means if you pick a pet that's like that but doesn't have a fire enhancement and then you add a fire enhancement to them, they're going to do very, very good damage. If, you're, if there's one that's balanced around or already having a, a fire enhancement, it's not going to, frankly, scale as well. Just... Uh, the unfortunate nature of, of how stuff is inside this game right now. All right, so um, with that rant go over for a little bit, um, let's go over to the next build, which is my Plasma Scimitar. Um, as you all know, I like the um, the engineering version. Um, this is because I like to have Suppression Barrage in in the build. This is a Starship with only one hangar bay, so I can't put in these the support um, frigate in, in here. So I'm using Suppression Barrage 1 in this build. Nonetheless, it's still a fine build. I still have three whole heals in this build. Um, and it's this is option one, by the way, which is like the Disco D7, because of a lot of its looks. Option two would be to use, would be to use Photonic Officer and um, Best Hope of, of the Empire. I'm, I'd basically be using my Beam Overload as, as a pseudo like fourth whole heal potentially on on the starship for some extra temporary H hp and a little bit of extra bonus damage totally viable as well um i'm mainly using version one for a lot of the other stuff here for my plasma build stuff i like the advanced ps of plasma dual cannons along with the rest of it being ultimate plasma ultimate and corrosive plasma do very close to the same amount of damage frankly um Outside, of course, you want to use the ultimate three piece from the low buy store. Um, but what it comes down to, frankly, is that even though they both do about the same amount of damage overall in, in ISC and HSC, also plasma does a debuff not just to, for for plasma damage, but also for kinetic damage, which enhances a lot of your science abilities, a lot of ally science abilities do kinetic damage and physical damage, and also a lot, a lot of torpedo and mine builds will do kinetic damage. So. This is it's, it's it's a debuff that not just does have has your weapons do more damage, but has potentially some other allies that are going to be in your group most likely. They'll be able to enhance their damage as well. That's that's why it's a bit more valuable to me. Corrosive plasma is available through Mud's Market, um, though as you buy buy it once and then you can freely reclaim it as much as you want for all of your characters from Mud's Market. So, corrosive plasma is the more budget option if if you're wanting to. Replace the four dual cannons and the one turret in this build with corrosive plasma. You're more than welcome to, too, and it's still going to be about the same um, as effective. For the third build itself, we're still using the same type of thing with the Disco two piece with competitive engines and um, fleet warp or fleet on deflector. We're using the ultimate, ultimate three piece of the ultimate console here with the ultimate omni and the ultimate torpedo. I never really ever ever used this really. That's why this thing is not upgraded because I just don't. It's just it just is not going to fire. So why do I bother up upgrading the thing? Technically, there might be an odd occasion where something sneaks behind me and it fires off a few times. So maybe in theory I should up upgrade that, but I haven't had, had issues at all in in this build with this not being upgraded. So just saying, I do, the Omni Beam because it is an Omni Beam, it is going to be fired. That's why the Omni Beam is is upgraded though outside of that a lot of this is what you're going to be expecting from a flagship flagship three piece was dprm and, and protomatter um i'm using the shield of sword of freezer generator instead of um my regular console for extra um temporary hp um and the ultimate swarm processor is also in, in here too for the ult ultimate three piece it is strong on its own but with, with the ultimate three piece i'm able to get a a, I'm able to have a clicky that gives me a 100% firing haste for 12 seconds, which effectively works as a, as an extra taunt console for me. 
ships. It's only, it's only 12 seconds instead of like the, the, the 30 seconds that the 31st century ships are able, able to get. But still, this is this is a 5-3 tank that's very respectable nonetheless. So I really like, 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 like this ship too. In terms, of, in terms of other stuff, it's honestly about what, what you expect it to be for these things for the officers, rotations, and things. This is an off tank type of skill tree. I've, I, I have that explained earlier. In terms of the hangar pets, I am using the um, ultra rare Romulan drone ships. When it comes to frigates in the game, for unbuffed hangar pets, they do some of the best DPS of, of any frigate in the game. Pretty much the only frigates that are better than them in terms of raw damage, not damage of like of like debuffing and enemy allies doing more damage. In terms of raw damage of hangar pets, the only one that's really better than this is like is 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 the Breen is the Breen um for for frigate pets. And you have to use a Breen cruiser or 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 the Breen carrier in order to be able to use use those pets. So unless you're flying one of those ships with with with, with a Breen Raider unlocked, you're not going to have access to like really better frigates. Of course, you could always use you know one of the, one of the squadron pets and use you know one of those traits I've shown earlier that enhances those pets, and you can use those and, and out DPS these drone ships technically a smidgen of out DPS. The ship also has has a bow cloak, so you'll be able to get some extra bonus damage at, at the beginning of the fight, too. Now, for my Polderon build, as you all know, I love Polderon. I love it a lot. Um, I also love Improved Tonic Officer. Um, I, do have, I do, have, do have a slight variant on this build of... of I'm um, using Cold Hearted um, instead of Attack Pattern Delta. Um, both options are fine. Um, I personally like this option more. I, I like narrow sensor bands as um, when I can fit them inside the build. Again, I like to have three whole heals. And I'm still able to do that with with this build, even with narrow sensor bands in there. I virtually can't fit in and a, a a pilot ability, which I really wanted to do. Technically, hold together is a lieutenant level whole heal I, I could put here, but it just doesn't. It's not as great of a whole heal as as an engineering team, in my opinion. It's, it's basically like hold together is basically ox to sif, but a pilot version of it, and you have to be a full impulse for it to be to be better. And so I'm not, I'm not a full impulse a lot of times in TFOs, so it's it's just generally not quite as good for us. It's still an option though, and this secondary option. I, I have I two pie abilities here, so I can still do cold hearted while having to, having photonic officer as my cooldowns. Um, but yeah, anyway, for the build itself for Polaron, this is this is what I do for my Polaron build. Um, I, I, I have the advanced views of Polaron beam, the morphogenic torpedo along with morphogenic energy weapon and morphogenic um, console for, for the for the Polaron three piece. I, I, I use the advanced temporal defense polar beam ray for extra survival, and whenever it its its proc goes off, it also does a reduction on bridge off your abilities, which is nice. And then for my last one in the front, I'm using one, just one, inhibiting polar on beam array. Because as long as I'm basically moving, there are a lot of enemies that move super slow or don't, don't move at all. While I'm just moving a little bit, this inhibiting polar on is a guaranteed whenever it hits somebody, it's going to reduce their damage resistance by 10. So it is it is a really nice weapon to have. You don't need multiple of it, just, just one is totally fine with that. Alongside that, I've got the Morphogenic Polar Energy Weapon along with three PS of Polar Beam Arrays. If this was a can Scatter Volley Polar build, instead of using a regular like Inhibited Polar on Dual Cannon or regular Inhibited Polar Turret, I could use the Gamma Reps on Advanced Inhibited Polar on Turret instead. And that would be a little bit better for the build overall. I can use that plus Morphogenic Energy Weapon as well. But because uh, the Morphogenic Energy Weapon counts as an Omni Beam, I can't use that plus the uh, Advanced Inhibiting Omni Beam. Just, frankly, just, just the way it is inside of Star Trek Trek Online. In terms of consoles, what you are going to notice is that I'm not using um, the, the Piezo Electric Focuser. Which would, which would give an extra 50% cat one damage. I, it's true. I haven't seen, like, I, I haven't seen a ton of different. Not like I, I, 
What's a good way to put this? In my parsings, the extra crit severity just seems to scale more than, than an, an extra um, universal console that's basically just giving me an extra a bunch of cat one damage. But then this is a starship that has six tactile consoles, so that, that might be part of the reason why the PS little electric focus just, just isn't performing as well as just, a, just just another crit severity console. Perhaps that's that's part of the reason why. That's just me. Um, in terms of the consoles, I'm using DPR and protomatter and whole image refractors. Tech and connect assembly module by bio, bio neuro and, and Ult ultimate. If you if you want to put domino in this build, just replace assembly module with domino and it's gonna be a just a fine build too. Cool. Alright. So for this build, again, this is a starship without a hangar base, so it's got no hangar base slot down there. Is a cruiser, so we still get five devices and such going forward. Other than that, it's a build that's pretty straightforward as well versus other ones. Um, for the antiproton sticks, um, for how I for how I like to think I was having issues with this build. Technically, I should have gone with a full um, photonic officer build with a photonic officer instead of a half bat, so I could have fit in three whole heels. This one only has two. Um, so it is going to struggle a little bit in that aspect. So just keep that in mind. It does, it, it is, this is a build that has issues. Um, which is why I, I have Honored Dead as a survival starship trait, just to help out a little bit more with, with this particular build. I'm using a 20 attach or uh, yeah, it's, this should have been a 20 attach matrix. I forgot to change the starship trait in there this is this isn't 20 attachment matrices for this build because it, it is a broad sighting beam build um and we're using body wool stuff so we're using one advanced temporal defense chronos on beam array keep in mind the temporal defense weapons their standard wording is chroniton the chroniton beams do anti-proton damage and scale with anti-proton stuff so don't be afraid that it says chroniton chroniton does anti-proton damage cool all right Alongside that, the rest of it just I, I've just I just used Baul in in anti-proton, the Baul um, connect torpedo, the Baul um, low by Omni, as well as you know a bunch of Baul anti-proton regular beam arrays. That plus the Baul um, console for the Baul three piece. When it comes down to damage in Star Trek Online right now with Fire Will, Baul anti-proton is undisputedly the best right now. It's also like the most recent of all the different subtypes, so it kind of makes sense. The Baul is is kind of the best when it comes to tanking. They did nerf some of his interactions with like chemocytes, so that other AP options have their can be situationally better for DPS captains. As before, it was basically every single captain that used antiproton used Baul. Now it is if you're tanking, you use Baul. If you're not tanking. You use other types of antiproton, which, which I think is a totally legitimate way, way, to, way to go, frankly. Again, I like, like my defense stuff because this ship needs the help. So I'm using Kabbalah two piece and the Discovery Reputations two piece. Then I've got, then I've got three um, crit severity consoles along with DPR and Protomatter and Home Image Refractors with, with the Bible console. And then four regular tactical consoles and a vulnerability exploiter to run out the build itself. Um, as, for, as for the hangar bay, um, the big selling point for the sticks, frankly, is the Terran M Empire frigates. That is why this ship is highly sought after. Um, what's nice about these hangar pets is they give attack pattern beta 3 and suppression barrage 3. This is extreme. This is an extremely strong combination. I'm not aware of really any other pets in the, in the game that does both of those things. Plus, it, it, it already has a very strong weapon enhancement already built into the ship too with Fire Firewall Three. So, it's it's very strong in its own right. If this ship was usable, that this frigate was used on usable on other, other stir ships, this would be be the frigate of of, of choice to use as the suppression barrage for it frankly for for, for your two hanger for your two hanger frigates or two hanger um flight flight that carries for instance regardless it is a very strong um hanger 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 pet and, and it's why the sticks is regarded as, as as one of the best tanks inside the game 
It's not because of the bridge off for Cena, it's not because of the base stats. It's because of this frigate right here. Cool. All right. And uh, and for the round out these energy builds, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you another option for a touch around Chronos. We'll we'll be doing a redirection to raise here. It's got three whole heals. Because it's redirection to raise, we're not gonna be using a torpedo in this build. Even though, yes, technically from a DPS perspective, having a Disco Torp would be a better DPS option. Um, we have Hatbat, we're going to use a Cold Hearted with Honor, Honor Dead and Pride, of, Pride of, of New Romulus just for extra um, Fire and Cycle Haze. Even though, yes, the bonus plasma damage is going to, is going to be wasted on, on the Starship. Um, when it comes to the consoles themselves, I'm using a bunch of refracting Tetram with one Omni Diffusive Tetram Beam Array. In a bunch of my testing, it's, I have so many mixed feelings about Tetrion because like every single good, like the two good options for Tetrion is refracting Tetrion and diffusive Tetrion. And it's like, why use diffusive Tetrion when I could use, you know, Kraton Beams if I want defense. I could use, you know, Valvar Polaron if I really wanted to debuff enemy shields. Or, you know, if, if, if I want, you know, a spreading proc, I could use Baula and Tapraxon, which has a guaranteed 5% 5, 5 damage spread into enemies, versus Tetron, which is a chance to do a little bit of extra damage to an, enemy, to, an, to an additional enemy or two. And so, everything just feels bad for Tetron. Tetron does need a new energy subtype or just significant changes to, to its current energy subtype so that it can be competitive. The other five energy types actually feel fine because we have Phaser for Federation, Disruptors for Klingon, Plasma for Romulan, um, Polaron for Dominion, and we have for and then we have for the for the Alliance we have an, we have Anti Proton, which we already knew for a long time because we had the 31st century ships in in the game. Of course, we're going to get 30 32nd century ships proper within like the next few months with Discovery in. The super far future but um, anyway um with 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 tetra we don't have any really super super strong three pieces when it comes to broadsiding tetra it's just the way it is sadly um so we're just using dpr and holding image factors with the um 31st century two piece of cross on capacitor and attack system stabilizer and then we're using Bioneuro, Tachyonic, and then also Swarm Processors to kind of round out the build itself. I think it's about, I think it's about as, as you would expect for a, an ox to back build with three technicians. I guess technically, from a bridge option cooldown perspective, you might be able to, to, cut, to cut it down to two technicians if both of them are very rare. Um, this particular captain has like one rare and two very rare. Um, and it seems to be close on some of the abilities, so I, I keep it the way it is. The ship comes with, with Epoch Fighters, so I just got the, the fleet variant of the Epoch Fighters, just, just, from, a, just from a space barbie perspective. Um, as for exotic builds, our first two here are going to be basically just about the, the exact same. I'm going to have one that's a direct entry weapon based science, and it's a can scatterfly build. Then we'll get to some closing thoughts on, on the video as well. Um, the first one here is the 31st um, e e Eternal. Again, this is probably not necessarily the most DPS or threat optimized for the bridge officer abilities. You could probably talk to other captains and they could probably tell you which other abilities you should be choosing instead of these ones. These ones, in my experience, seem to work just fine um, for, for, for threat, you know, for keeping over 70% 70, 70 threat. This stuff here works, is what I'm saying. Um, when it comes to the seating overall, um, for science, I like to have Ox to Sif 1 and Versio Polarity 2. And then, as, as a filler and en um, engineering ability, you could have an engineering team, or if you want more DPS, as like, it's like we're having here, you could use um, Merge Part of Ox and, and use Assembly Power Conduits if you're really wanting to squeeze out the damage. Um, history Remember and Sport Fuse Anomalies for a, a, a pure exotic build are totally fine to put in there. And then because it's site torp, checkmate is definitely a, a fine option too. And then improve having officers just to run out the cooldowns and do extra exotic damage. 
Technically, I could have put um, the trade for, 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 for the Chrono ship on this ship as well instead of like on or dead. If, if you want to put it on here, you, you most definitely can. And this ship has three whole heals, Oxus Sif, um, Causeway version 2, and Hazard Raiders. So this is, this is the starship that even though you're stuck with a Lieutenant Tactical technically, as, as a tank tap, captain, all you really need is Tactical Team 1. You don't really, you know, if you're doing a pure exotic, you don't really, you don't really need more than that. More and more than tackle team one and then a lieutenant commander engineering. The rest of it can be put, can be pure, pure science. And this, and that's what this ship is able to do. And so from a bridge hours perspective, it's hard to get something better than this, frankly, unless you have temper operative plus, um, plus like a, a lieutenant command C so you can have route play marker as well. But I mean, even, even then, you know, it's still, a, it's still a situational um, standpoint. In terms of the stuff for the weapons, Gravimetric Photon, Particle Mission, and Dark Matter are really, really nice to have for four weapons. There are a couple of ones that you can situationally put up in front instead of these ones. These ones have been staple for a long time. And I think they're still totally fine to put there as well. Um, I'm actually using the full Discovery 3 piece with this, so I can have the Dark Matter just constantly firing at enemies below 50% health. Um, and so the Phaser and the Dyson Proton weapon aren't upgraded in the rear. The Dyson is for the two piece, and the Phaser wide angle in the back is for the three piece. I'm also using the Advancing Heavenly Omni Beam on, on this build, just so that, you know, if I'm scooting slightly forward and enemies aren't moving, I, I get a guaranteed little bit of, of a debuff to enemies as well. Not really there for the super, you know, DPS side of things. It's really just there for 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 that debuff itself. Um, for the space set, I'm using the the Imperial sets, Deflector and Warp Core. I'm using the Temporal Defense Impulse Engines and and Defense Temporal, Temporal Defense Shield Array for for both of those um, nice two pieces. Uh, I'm just using a regular tier and secondary deflector. Feel free to talk to other DPS captains as to what type of deteriorating second deflector is the best for your particular build. Um, there are a couple of different opinions on that. I'm not really going to go into nitty gritties in terms of what's better than what. I'm just using a regular crafted deteriorating second deflector at Mark 15 Epic, and that works well enough for me. Um, for my consoles, I'm using the DPR and Protomatter and Chronotachinite Chrono Capacitor. Um, because that console is really, really strong. Uh, it, it's a 30 second taunt with that first 15 seconds being a heal as well. So it's, it's, it works as both a, both a damage console and a healing console. It's kind of like DPRM as well. Um, for our consoles, our exotic part of Felix Sired with EPG mod, Mark 15, to basically round up our EPG so we can more focus on just clicky consoles from there. Auxiliary like Ejection Assembly, Construction Anchor, and Delphi Tears Render are basically just there for the bonus exotic damage in, 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 in the build. And then we're rounding out the build with um, we'll have, we'll have, we'll have Target Attractor Arrays, Plaza Storm Module, and Cascade Gravity Metric Disruptions and Ion Storm Generator for nice clicky um, abilities that, that do high, high threat against enemies. And then Lorca's Cousin Fire Control is just for, for the three piece itself on, on the build. Um, for the skill tree, feel free to see this the side torp. It does have very little in terms of, of tactical abilities. You can feel free to use Augie's skill tree if, if, if you're wanting to copy my, copy, copy my build and just do some other various things. Uh, for this starship in particular, because we have high shields and, and a little bit lower on the hull, we're adding in superior shield repair just to give us some extra shield, shield regeneration. Um, just so that it's a little bit easier to survive and to tank. And I'm using Ultra Rare Delta Flyers for this ship just because I thought it, it would be fun. Um, for our Miracle Worker Voyager, um, we have, we have tra the traits that are the same here. Um, because it's Lieutenant Tactical without a specialist ability there, we have to use some other ability that's not, you know, a heal. And so I'm, I'm using Torp Spread too, just drawing out a little bit. Um, in terms of traits, basically the same otherwise. And again, as I've told you all before, I like to use at least one specialist ability um, whenever, I, whenever I have a starship that's tier 6. And so the only one that seemed to fit with Merc Worker and Pilot 
functionally was um, deploy a gravitic in induction platform. It is a it is a control building, so it does help with some synergies in that aspect. Um, Otherwise, it's just a bunch. Of, it's just a kind of like straightforward science build in general. So I've, I'm using a couple of different abilities just to kind of like to vary it a little bit and have a feel a little bit different from, from from my other other science tank build. And this is a build that's that's a little bit older on the older side of things versus other other things. I've I've, I've been trading out some of the bridge option abilities, which is why I'm I still have the morphogenic three piece on on this starship. Even though I'm not using stuff like. Um, one, one, one of my early iterations of, of this build had double Lieutenant Tactical, so I could have um, Can Scatter Volley 1 and Beam Fire Roll 1. I will eventually be trading out some of the Morphogenic stuff with better things later on. Um, I'm still using the Temporal 2-piece and Discovery Legends 2-piece on this. It was, one, it was one of the old variations of the science that I, I was using in, in the past, frankly. My four torpedoes are still the same as, as the last build, though. And um, versus the other build, um, instead of the Chronotank Capacitor, I'm using a Blade Generator, which is, which is a nice, fun console that not only it, it decently works, but it also it, it has some fun visuals to add to, to this ship as well. So yeah, um, other than that, it's pretty much it's similar stuff to what the other, the other build was as well because we have higher hull and a little bit lower shields um i decided just to add particle generator amplifier instead of these uh, superior shield we paris um reputation trait otherwise the traits are actually pretty much the same as the last one so for the last build that i'll be showing is my it is my personal ver version of a direct energy, energy, energy weapon um exotic unbuild and I'm, I'm using the paradox temporal dreadnought um, it is an account locked dreadnought through months market if you got it on sale then you've got it on sale um, in terms of its seating obviously I, as i said i like i like to use special stability so of course i'm gonna have a really point marker in here um, and because this it, it's a direct energy weapon based build i still need three tactical abilities so my the lieutenant commander seat i've made into another tactical seat I've added um, can scatter volley and attack power and beta. Um, and so with attack power and beta and other stuff, I'm able to use Terran machinations. Um, that's sort of trade because if I use an attack pattern, it, it will um, give me exotic damage and, and control abilities give me firing cycle haste. So as long as I'm alternating and making sure that all of those things are going off properly, I'm, I'm able to enhance my exotic damage and to give myself firing cycle haste from my energy weapons too. I'm still I'm I'm using emergency weapon cycle instead of instead of um assembly power conduits just to give myself even more extra haste and I'm using within barrage just because as a tank my bridge officer seats are fairly limited when it just comes down to it um, I don't want to waste two bridge officer seats to keep my firewall up 100% of the time. So for me, it's just a much better value for my personal sanity just to use Wuthering Barrage and to just use cannons and turrets. Now, if one of the multi-mission vessels was, was a 4-3 and was able to use aux cannons or if auxiliary can cannons were usable on other sources besides that, that, that multi-mission science vessel Mega Bundle, then I would have no problem using the, no problem using auxiliary auxiliary disruptor um dual cannons in the front of the starship unfortunately those weapons are still stuck to those starships and i don't feel those sources are quite good enough in my opinion to warrant switching to something like, like that for a, a direction engine weapon, weapon based build although it does have some interesting concepts frankly best pick our starship for a direction engine weapon based tank I'm using for my consoles. I'm using the DPR and perimeter and area structural capacitor for my three survival consoles. For my tactical consoles, I'm using what you you expect for a for for a direct energy weapon based build with workers custom fire controls plus three energetic chromatic matrix matrix infusers. Um, I forgot to rename that. That should be the should be a stripper instead of touch around. So again. There's over 175 slides in this video. There's, there's going to be errors. 
Um, in terms of my science consoles, um, the focus is is because I don't because I don't have that many consoles to spare. The focus is more on threat instead of on raw survival. So we're just focusing on mainly on co on the consoles that get generate threat. So Iron Storm Generator, Cascade Dragon Metric, Metric Disruptions, as well as Multi Target Tractor Arrays. Those are what, what we're using, frankly, alongside Auxiliary Ejection Assembly, just for a bonus um, a bonus a bonus exotic damage clicky that also gives me some movement to get around the map a little bit easier too. Cool. All right. Um, as for consoles themselves, and yes, the what the weapons are wrong. I I forgot forgot to change that. This is towards the end of the video anyway. The the stuff here should be um, Terran Task Force um, dual cannons, three spiral wave dual cannons, three spiral wave um, turrets. Instead of what's 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 listed here. So you can tell I copy and pasted from a couple of different slides to make this video. Um, and yeah, so we're basically towards the end, 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 end of the video now. Um, if you're curious about other people who are who, who have made tanking builds and have done it via the math instead of the feel like I have done um, with, with, with tanks in this video, I, I I have two tr um, trusted people on STO builds that that have made builds that are a little bit old, but um, but 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 a very strong and well have 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 some very good just justifications for why they're doing certain things that, um, the way that they are. Uh, the links for them will be in the, the description. Um, as for some stuff that I hope changes in the future, here's a bunch of stuff that are listed. Um, the big things I'm going to mention, it's kind of the stuff that's over over here. So first off, I'm hoping that Beam Firewall changes. I'm hoping that either the min that it changes to be a 15 second minimum cooldown, or it's changed so that regression arrays can actually have a 20 second maximum duration. I hopefully one of those things happens so that I'm not stuck having to use entwined tactical matrices to keep 100% uptime. Which feels really bad because 50% of the time with being Firewall 3 and 50% of the time with being Firewall 1 just feels bad. It, it's kind of the way you, that it has to work right now, but it just feels bad. Um, additionally, I, I hope we got power from life support actually is fully reworked. I've got my idea here of how to actually change it so that it's actually exciting. It wouldn't be for tanks, it'd be for DPS captains, but having some sort of insane awesome thing with some pretty significant downside for, for, for DPS captains would be something to work around for them. Also, I really hope that ramming speed gets reworked. Right now, it is, it is an ability that no one uses ever. And so I really hope that, you know, it actually does significant flight speed in turn. And actually does damage, does actual good damage if you if you hit a target with it while your MSP is going on. Seriously, Crypt, like I want it reworked so that people actually use the ability instead of ignore it entirely. Cool. All right. There's a couple of bridge off your abilities that I hope are added and some sorts of traits that I think would be pretty fun. And these these abilities that they were added would actually make me want to play a uh, tweet a build. But that's just me. Anyway, um, this has been a long video. <laughs> We're like over two and a half hours now. So um, anyway, um, happy holidays. Sorry for the delay on this. I've been off and on sick to the point that it's been hard to speak for long periods of time, which for a video like this one is kind of important to be able to do. So hopefully... Um, a lot of this stuff made sense in this video. But um, yeah, um, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for, for being patient. I do have a couple of videos planned for January um, because there are some things that I was going to do that this video just kind of spiraled out of control <laughs> um, in terms of all the slides on it. At least this this was less than 200 slides. I was, I was afraid I was going get, to get to that point. And frankly, luckily, because people have made a couple of videos out there, I didn't have to escalate to that extreme end. But anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Um, and, and this is going to be the last video of 2020. 
2021 is going to be, be, be interesting for sure. There's going to be some major changes happening to the game um, in terms of in terms of Starship accessibility. So it's going to be exciting to see what happens, and hopefully that makes the game last quite a bit longer. Thank you all for watching, everyone.